Hello, good night, everyone. Hey, what's up, Reef G's? Sup, TMG? Mm -hmm. Hey, forgot to grab a brew. Forgot to grab a coffee before. Hey, everyone, testing. Forgot to add a, um, forgot to get a coffee before I started streaming. So I'm coffee list tonight. Hey, Ash. Hey, TMG. Hey, West Coast Reefer. Hey, Lisa. Dano. Um, I'm good, guys. I'm good, guys. Just give me a second. Let me prepare this link. How's everyone doing? Um, how is everyone doing? I am all right. All right, put that long URL. Easy gives you the short URL. Hey, what's up, Steve? Long time no see, man. Where did I go in the evening? Probably I fell asleep. I really <laughs> fell asleep. Hey, what's up, TMG? What's going on, man? I'm um, good, man. What's tonight's topic? Man, I want to talk about refugiums a little bit, man. Gotcha. I know this is this is gotcha. an aquarium tech talk, and you know, yeah, if anybody needs help with has an apex or any kind of tech question or, but um, you know, we'll absolutely talk about it, but. You know, I think I think we're always on talk about future. Yeah. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's, what's up, up OG? How y'all doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, I prepared a few things. Not that you know, um, just so we don't get too off track tonight. But let me just read a few things. You know, that I think we could talk about while still discussing refugiums and aquarium tech in general, right? So yeah. I'm just going to read these off. And you guys let me know what you think. I know, OG, you don't have a saltwater tank. But, you know, you've been around us enough to know. Yeah, you know. A little something, something. All right. Little something, something. All right. Yeah. So um, refugiums, um, what are they goals? I mean, we don't have to dive. We can talk about the science a little bit. But we don't have to dive too much into the science. What's you know. Up? Hey, what's up? What's up, um, Exclusive? Um, why do we use them versus other methods? You know, why do we use one versus the other? Are they easier or harder versus, let's say, a Chato reactor or something? Um, what are some lights that people use on their refugiums? This is where we get a little, you know, we still got to integrate that tech component. So, you know, what are some of the refugium lights? How big are your refugiums? How do you kind of, um, what's the word? How do you deck them out? Do you use timers, controllers? Do you use an apex to control it versus like a simple Home Depot timer? Or do you use like a Senai monitor? You know, do you use a pH monitor to kind of control them, turn them on and off? Um, there might be a lot of things I'm missing, but hopefully these are some of the things that we can get to tonight. What's up, all? Hey, what's up, Ash? Not much. Good topic, bro. Hey, man. Thank you. Yeah, um, really good topic. All right, so let me see if I missed anybody. We got Ash, we got OG, we got TMG, and we got Exclusive. What's up, What's up Ash? Not much, bro. How are you, OG? All right, good to see you back. Yeah, buddy. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Same here. You know what? I gotta, I gotta get some light. This is, this is dark, man. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, get, I gotta. If I'm gonna be doing this, um. I need some light. I got I got some kind of fancy studio stuff here that I never took out the box, but I think you know next week I am definitely going to try to try to. I can't be the tech guy, man, and my stream is low tech, you know. So hey, you know, like guys, you cave, man, what's going on? Huh? Look like you in the cave. I know, man. 
you know what, guys, I'm going to work on it. I can't be the aquarium tech person and then my stream is low tech. So I promise I'm going to improve it. I'm not saying it's it, next week is going to be like a full on Hollywood production, but, you know, slowly but surely we'll get there. Cool. We'll, we'll get Glad there. Glad to hear that. Oh, we can't wait. All right. <laughs> All right. I know you're equipped with something really good with your skills. Uh, Do you got a candle? <laughs> You know what? There's actually pretty. <laughs> <sighs> oh, see, while well, Molly teasing, man, I got to bust your chops. I never see you, you know, anymore. You know, this is this is my living room, and you know, purposely, like I keep the light kind of low because this is my relaxing space, and then I don't have bright lights here. We use like lights with like the the yellow hue because it's less on the eyes so my lights are actually my living room are actually on full blast man it's just that i just like to keep my living room is my relaxing area that's where my tank is behind me that's where i watch tv so the other rooms in my apartment have you know except for the bedrooms like the kitchen area and stuff have really bright lights that's where you would sit that's where you would read but this is sort of my my. it's ambient yes yeah good word ash good word <laughs> yeah. Bubba said, is O in the reef and protection program? He might be. He might be. He might be. He might be. Thank you. Hey, um, yeah, I've, I've been a little bit, you know, out of it a few days, but, you know, started a new job and it's taken me a while to get settled down. So <coughs> even like today, I really, I know like Jeeves was streaming. I don't, I'm not sure if anyone else streamed, but. I think it Ash did. did his first stream, right, Ash? Did yeah, he? you got that right. Yeah, I was streaming in the evening. Apparently, a cruise was on, and then uh, cruises went offline for some reason. So I hopped on. I'm like, let me try it. And it worked. It worked through my iPad. <laughs> oh, yeah, first ever live stream. And, uh, yeah, quite a few folks joined in. Uh, Phil was there. Baba came on. Dave came on. Uh, you know, uh, Salt Shack came on. Exclusive came on, so it was fun. They can get addictive, right? Oh yeah. Wait, so you streamed from your iPad because I've never I've I've done a few streams from my phone, but I've never done a hangout from my phone. So you were able to do a hangout from your iPad? Uh no, just a stream. Oh, just um, a stream. Yeah, because I don't think you could do a hangout from uh without the laptop. Ah. I see. I Next see. Talk. Tech talk. See, we are getting into there. All right. <laughs> hey, so, All right. So I have some. Um, I have some news. So remember how I was fighting. Um, see more that battle with the Chato and all that mm -hmm. growing Chato. So I okay. about two weeks ago, I um, I installed the reactor, right? And I got some cheap, you know, like fifteen dollars, six dollar lights or whatever the heck they are on eBay. Um, and I put like a golf ball size of Chato in there. Mm -hmm. It filled up the reactor. Uh, in about like two weeks, and the Chato in my sump never changed size. So wait a second. So let's back up because maybe I missed. So you're using, as of right now, you're using a Chato reactor. I'm using both. I have the light in the Chato, in the in the sump, and I have also like right next to it a Chato reactor with like you know stringy white light, both white lights, and mm -hmm. in the sump, which is supposed to be like a heavier light. Um, didn't grow my chato at all, and in the reactor, it like, I mean, it filled the whole container within two weeks. Uh -huh. Within two weeks, so uh, you know the the whole thing about lighting. I, I don't know anymore, man. I'm like so lost. I don't so, know why it would work in one and not the other. So let me let me let me try to. So I heard what you said. So um, so let me. So you've you've create you've set up a chato reactor. What chato reactor are you using? Uh, is it the uh, one from Skims? No, nah, it's not a Skims. It's um, I forgot the name of it right now, but it's it's fairly large. Okay, so oh, the pa Pax Bellum. Pax, Be is it a Pax Bellum? No, no, oh. no, I'm spending <laughs> money on that. Crazy. Um, all right, so so I think it's the a DIY. So if you're oh, so it's a DIY. So that's good, and you're using a pump to pump yeah. water through it. Yeah. You know what? So out of everything you said, and I could, be, it could, yeah, it's the flow. Um, I, I personally didn't think you had that much flow going through your sump because I know you have, I know 
you know, it was my opinion when you set it up that your sump was a little too small for the system. Um, and I know you were thinking of, you know, maybe upgrading the sump at some point in the future, but it might be the flow, man. It might be because if 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 you're using similar type lights, the shadow reactor versus the refugium light, and it's the same strain, you basically just took a little bit of the same shadow yep. and put it in the reactor. Yeah, it might be the flow. What yeah. pump? What pump are you using to pump? Um, is it like um, like a MJ MJ pump? It's it's a larger pump. Uh, it's like rated for like um, nine hundred gallons per hour, but I I t turned it down all the way to the lowest setting. But it's like um, in the Chato reactor, I could see like the Chato actually moving. You know, just like a little shaking back and forth. Where in the sump, it doesn't move at all. So. I'm I'm also thinking that it could be something with the uh, with the flow. Yeah, but I, I but I think um, I think I know you you mentioned it moving, but instead of kind of fo I'm focusing on not necessarily Chato moving, but the fact that the ch the, the the in the Chato reactor there's more contact time. Um, the, I know you, the pump you just told me about was that your return pump or is that the pump that's feeding the Chato reactor? Yeah, yeah, the feeding the Chato reactor. Yeah, it might be that it just has more contact time with the algae, um, so it's allowed to like filter, you know. Because um, if if the if your Chato if it was having good contact time with your algae and your refugium, the algae would still grow. But probably what would happen if you had slow flow through your you know sump, the algae would still grow. But what would happen is it's not filtering enough of the tank water, so the Chato would be growing still, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't, you know, you're, you would still have a little bit high nitrates or phosphates because it's not filtering enough of the water. But I think you kind of figured out something here where that a lot of us don't think about is contact time has a lot to do with maybe the Chato growing. And I, I, that's something I never thought about when, you know, we were discussing it. So it could be that maybe the Chato reactor has low enough flow. So it has enough time to be, you know, the water to flow across the algae and the algae to pull out whatever nutrients it needs. What do you yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the return coming out of the uh, Chato reactor and blow it towards where the Chato and the sump is and see if that, the head, if that does anything to it. Now, quick question. Uh, exclusive. Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. Uh, what lights are you running on your uh, sun? Um, I I got a a, a daylight a growth light from um, um, Home Depot. Okay. Um, change it. Yeah, I've changed already light lights two three times, man. It's no, it's not really it, the light. It. All right. This why I say it is a light. Your you're comparing light that is pretty much directly touching Chato versus how many how many watts is the is the one from? Uh, you cut off there. Say yes, again. sorry, I had a phone call. How many watts is the light you're using from Home Depot? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight watts. Um, no, I'm sorry, thirty-eight par, but it's it's like fifty-six watts. Yeah, it's a par thirty-eight bulb. Yeah. 50. yeah. It's a uh, sixty-seven hundred Calvin, okay. I think I, t to be honest, from what I know, um, I think comparing the watts of like an LED versus, let's say, an incandescent bulb, they're all different things. I think you'd have to measure them from the wall to kind of get an idea of how much watts or you have to measure the par on all of them because I think they'll be all different. Because even though those par thirty-eight bulbs. You know, they say par yeah. 38. Yeah, they're actually, I think the last time I saw, like, I think Dave now has a par meter and is running one. And I think he has a video where he talks about how much par it puts out. So, uh, but I think the last time BRS and I measured one, that thing gave out closer to like a thousand par, like 12 inches, 12 inches, um, you know, under the light. So even though it says par 38, it's not actually like, 30 par it doesn't mean it yeah. that has nothing to do with the par i think it's more the name those things no, are yeah, actually, that's a style yeah that's a, that's a yeah. sizing that they use yeah yeah but i use a, i use the uh, the bulb that um dave has you know before and i didn't see much but again then again you know the tank was so new so I might just wait a couple more weeks anyway um just to continue but um 
Yeah, I thought it was interesting that it's growing on one and not the other. But uh, anyway, go ahead, man. I didn't want to, you know, blow up your stream. No, listen, what are you talking well, about? This is what we're talking about, man. We're talking about refugiums, and you, you, you're talking about refugiums. So um, this is actually pretty good. Um, I want to ask you some more questions, um, you know, or some things to keep an eye on. Um, when you do, if you do get the refugium eventually going, um, one thing I probably, um, I want you to keep an eye on which one gives you a bigger pH boost at night. Would it be the refugium? Maybe when you get both of them going, you know, you could turn one off for a night or so since you now, I know you have a controller and you have that thing up and running now. So right. see if you get a bigger pH boost or now that you have the, you know, now that you have the, um, the Chato reactor going, see if you get a bigger pH boost at night versus, you know, when you trying to get the refugium going, that's something I'd be interested to know. Um, yeah. That's that's something. Um, See, I, I was hesitant about doing this because I didn't want the light to compete, you know. Yeah, but you need but you need your tank to be filtered, man. And for some reason, yeah. if it's not, I know Billy Pipes personally. <laughs> Billy, Billy, I think is having. I think Billy had the opposite experience. I think Billy just never got the Chato in a Chato reactor to grow. So Billy. Billy has an immaculate tank. Like he has low nutrients. He is careful about what he feeds. He doesn't overdo it. His tank is growing. He doesn't have high nutrients, has no algae. But for some reason, when Billy uses like these fancy refugium lights and then he went and had a Chato reactor, couldn't get the Chato to grow. The thing died. But when he put it back in his refugium and just used like a simple incandescent light from Home Depot, he got his Chato to grow like crazy. So, um, I don't know what's the difference between why that would be happening for him versus what's happening for you. I have I have no clue. And you know another thing I noticed is the 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 uh, the chato in the reactor was clean as opposed to the chato that was stagnant just sitting there in the sump was full of like this I don't know like brown something like a slimy thing that looks like like melted like it was melting or something you know what I mean? Like yeah, algae sure. or something like that. I don't know how to describe it. No, but... I think I, I think I think he it's uh, it's a thin little uh, stuff that sometimes the Cheeto is dying. That's how it feels like, uh, very thin hair yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, but let me ask you this: the spectrum of both the lights, um, are they the same? Uh, probably not. I, I think that uh, I, I don't know what the uh the string one is, the one from eBay, but the one that I got, you know. The, as opposed to the one I got from um, Home Depot. I, I don't know what the strengths are. Yeah, I think either one of these lights should. I think he dropped out. I think um, Ash dropped out. But I think I think either one of these lights should go trade -o. So I know, I know there are lights that are going to perform better than the other. Uh, there are always lights going to perform better than the other. I personally think the grow lights perform well. But... Um, you know, I think either one of these lights shouldn't shouldn't be the difference between his Chato growing or dying. There is something else going on there. I, I think it's also uh, in the reactor. The light is surrounding the Chato from all sides. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it's getting more light, even though it might not be as powerful as the one in the sump. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm sure that if that I take is... a par meter, if I take a par meter and I check the par inside the reactor, it's going to be, you know, a lot higher, if not double, than what's in the sump, just that because it's exactly that close. What I was trying to say before. Yeah. Yeah. That your sump light isn't powerful enough. Um, I'm like, not to, not to like really get off, but I, I'm like a firm believer in. The stronger your fuse light, the better results you're gonna get. You know, I run both. I run the par thirty eight bulb on my frac tank, and I run similar spectrum, but the strip light on the reactor on my main display, the all in one tank, and both the tank. I mean, I'm getting tremendous healthy growth on the chato like you know i used to use the incandescent bulb as well from home depot and as uh, o said it, it was growing chato as well 
but the health of the chedo i can tell you the the difference is the dark green chedo you can tell the difference when the chedo is not strong enough and i've seen uh, the spectrum that i'm using right now has a big difference in terms of growing the chedo i mean tremendous growth and health of the chedo itself so i i just thinking in the last 2 years just the different on the three at some point in the last 3 years i've had three tanks and i've changed refugium some a couple of times so i've used chato reactors i think right now tmg you have one of the chato reactors i've used and i've used chato reactors and i've never had no matter what i was doing with the chato reactor i've never had the algae die at all I don't, I don't think there's even been like a problem with the acclimation period. Um, and I've used like these grow Amazon strip lights from eBay. I've used the same lights that um, I think B, uh, no, not BRS, Marine Depot recommended. I've used refugiums. Um, the thing I've learned is I've always had the Chato grow. Some of it took more effort than the other. I've killed chato with two bright lights very easy like whenever you're going from like someone who's growing chato with let's say the 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 little um incandescent bulb like the five dollar home depot bulb versus if you're going from that to a like a high powered like a kessel or something you can kill the refugium if you don't acclimate it like there's been times where i've had to start at like two three hours um the tank i have the nano tank, the little acrylic circular nano tank I have, Dave's nano tank built me these really powerful white lights. The first time I put Chato in them, boom, like within a few days, the Chato was stringy, falling apart. It ended up all in the tank and died. So what I had to do is I had to start at one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour until now I can have it up to, you know, 12 hours a night and I have to empty it. It's full every two to three weeks. Um, and I know exclusive over the last couple of months, you've tried a few different lights. You've tried, you know, you've tried the par 38 bulbs. I think you tried the $5 bulb. Um, so I don't think it's light in your instance. At first I thought it was you, um, you know, maybe having the light on too powerful, too close, but I think for you, it might be contact time with the algae. Um, someone was asking, um, what are your nitrates and phosphates? What are your nutrients? My nitrates are at ten, and phosphates are at zero. Yeah. I know, I know and people, that's, and that's a problem. That believe it or not, but you know how many times I'm feeding my tank right now to try to get like a reading on the on the phosphates. I'm feeding my tank like three, four times a day. Yeah, to try to see. I'm still getting zero. I'll feed and take a measurement right after, and I get zero. Um, you know what? I if you're feeding that much, um and you have no nutrients, then I wouldn't worry about it. And to be honest, I've had no nutrient tanks. For instance, when I had a Zeovit tank and had zero nitrate, zero phosphate, I still got my Chato to grow. It might have grown a lot slower than what, you know, like right now I'm on Triton and basically my re my refugium is my main filtration. It might have grown slower, but I still got it to grow. But if you have no low lowish nitrates and no phosphates, um, I think your tank is doing all right, man. I think you're right. Yeah, no, everything is good. I'm getting really nice polyp extension on the corals. Um, you know, the only thing, the only complaint that I'm ha that I have is just that I'm having like that green glass. You know what I mean? The dust. But that's just a matter of time until it goes away. Yeah. Uh, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove my my filter socks because I think that also is is trapping a lot of nutrients and like uh, you know stuff that could probably that the chato could absorb and, and basically grow from it. I, so, um, I, try that. I want to ask exclusive a question. So hey, you remember you had a real bad smell. You, you didn't know if it was a dead fish somewhere. Nah, it, it's, um, it's the skimmer, man. It's I'm still getting it. Oh, uh, it's a skimmer. Okay. It's the freaking skimmer. I, you know, I, I'm cleaning my skimmer out like every day, literally right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, um, Probably tomorrow, I'm gonna to try to steal one of my wife's freaking stockings and fill it with, um, with uh, what do you call it? Um, Carbon. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you, and put it on top of it to absorb uh, the smell. Ooh, you know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You know the thing with the skimmer is 
And this is something that's exclusive. I'm sorry, man. This is something I forgot to warn you about that skimmer. For some reason, that skimmer cup is huge. And because the way Vertex yeah. is built it, um, it has holes on the top and it allows yeah. the spell. So to be honest, to be honest, I'm OG. Like when that skimmer cup was full, like you could smell it. You could smell it in my living room. Like, yeah, you know, stinks, if, if you're home all day, you know, if you're home all day, you wouldn't smell it. But if I went outside and came back, yeah, you know, with the kind of smell, you know, so you, so, so my wife probably would be home all day and wouldn't smell it. As soon as I walk in, I'm like, yep, that skimmer need exchange, need, um, need, need, um, that skimmer needs changing. So, yeah, exclusive. You can absolutely do that. Or if you're a little bit handy, you can cut like, um, a bottle or acrylic sheet or something and then just, you know, create like something on top that can hold the carbon and then just sprinkle the carbon um, on top of it. But yeah, I, that, that works. Any one of those will work. Um, let me let me just back up to two things you said that I want to cover. So the first with the skimmer is you're emptying the skimmer every day. Yeah, it's to, to avoid the smell, man. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. And um, just uh, something I think Atch touched on and you touched on, the thing with some weird algae growing on top of your chato, that happens to me too. And to me, I mean, I don't mind it too much. For me, it's just, it's just a, when I see it too bad, I think it's just a sign for me to, it's time to empty the top layer. So what I basically do is just scoop the top layer of my chato off and just throw it away. But I see, I definitely see that too. I see it in the Chato reactor, sometimes when I open it, you'll see like a slime. I'll see it on the top of the Chato. Um, but my refugium right now, it doesn't get a lot of surface agitation. So that little slime on top of the Chato tends to build up a lot. But for me, I don't see that it affects anything. I just, you know, I just, I just cut it off and throw it out. So yeah. are you guys like, you know, like I, I cannot see a dirty sump. You know what I mean? So I'm always in there freaking cleaning that thing out, and I know it's bad. You should just let it get dirty, but I cannot see it like dirty. Like I, I, I want it clean. You know what I mean? But isn't that the whole point to have a sun I, I know, man. I know, <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I always keep effing with it, man. Just like, oh, this is dirty. I gotta clean it out. You know? Yo, exclusive. <laughs> I, I, I know, exclusive. man. I know TMG. I know, man. I know. <laughs> I know what um, you're gonna say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you don't know what I'm going to say. Um, I was going to say, is the the light for your fuge making uh, contact with your skimmer cup? No, nah, I, I blocked everything off. Okay. Yeah. I, that's, I, the I, only time, that's the only time my skimmer cup actually, I actually smell anything. Um, it shouldn't be that pungent, though. I, I, I don't know what it is, TMG, but it's this. See, most skimmers doesn't have holes in the top. I think Vertex this I think Vertex designed this skimmer. I think they sell some accessories so if you're running ozone like the ozone escapes at the top, right? So then they sell an accessory that you could put on the top and then put the the carbon in. Also, they also sell like neck cleaners. So another feature another feature with air quotes of the skimmer is the fact that when you we, they, they've made it with big enough screw holes that you can attach their neck cleaner easy to it. But um, to be honest, um, TMG, it's a little bit different with the Vertex, especially this skimmer. Like it has really like not not big, but maybe penny size, four or five penny size screw holes on the top of the skimmer. So while other skimmers, you know, you just drop the cup on and it keeps the smell in. There's it. it yeah. It's easier to escape. It's a it's a vertex thing, and I don't think their smaller skimmers have it. I think it's the no, skimmer. Because the skims, this, my my skims has holes in the in the top. I yeah, not not as big as the vertex though. Yeah, the, not as big. Not yeah. As big. Hey, ex, don't you agree, exclusive? Like the holes are sort you know tight, big for, yes, for yeah. Well, let me put ask you a question. Put if, tape over if, them. if he would, yeah, I was gonna say if he if he blocked the holes, would that interfere with the? Yeah, is that going to interfere with the performance of the skimmer? No. You know, I don't know, but it, we shouldn't. Get, it shouldn't. If um, anything, your skimmer, um, the skimmer litter might burp every now and then when the pressure builds up. That's probably it. Mm. You know what? I don't know. I, I don't know. Lock the holes and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, you know what? The good thing about these skimmers, though, um, um, exclusive, I think if you call someone like BRS who sells these skimmers, they will absolutely be able to like give you first hand advice 
on what happens. I think SC is saying it will restrict the air. I have a feeling that before you go ahead and do that, before you go, because the thing about these vertex skimmers, they pull uh, a lot of air, like yeah. more air that. So I right now have a Tunzi skimmer that's rated for about the same or bigger. We're talking about the Vertex Omega 180i. So the Vertex skimmer is the, the Tunzi skimmer I'm running now is actually rated for probably bigger tank than the Omega than the Omega 180 that I was running before. That Vertex skimmer pulls in 1,800 liters of air per hour versus my Tunzi now that skimming pulls in only 600. So that's the thing about those Vertex skimmers. They use great pumps and whatever they're doing when 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 Vertex modifies the, the block on these pumps, they pull a lot of air. So I don't know if by taping it up, I, maybe, I'm just saying, before we do that, just, just maybe ask on the Vertex forums or call BRS and now, find I, out. I, I, have a, I have a contact over at Vertex. I'll just... I'll send them an email and ask them. Um, but, you know, talking about the pulling air and all that, it's like, you know, if you notice your pH in mine, it's neck and neck. You know what I mean? Um, we're we're off by like, you know, two, three points. So I don't think your skimmer is that, doing that much bad of a job. I think it's fine. Yeah, now, but- the only thing that I stopped doing was I stopped – 24 hour bubbling in the sump. I was, you know, I had uh, an air stone, uh, a wood stone, sorry, set to the uh, Tom's aqua lifter. And I was running that 24 seven. And uh, Nick was like, no, nah, that's bad. Don't do that. So now I just run it at night from like eight to eight. Uh, um, the thing about the, ver- when I was running the vertex, so yours and I skimmers, Yours and our current skimmers, because I think, so what he was talking about is we both have access to see what each other's apex, you know, are doing. Like, um, you know, I think we learn a lot from each other. Um, my skip, my vertex skimmer at the time, I'm, I'm pulling air from outside. Remember that exclusive. So when I was running the vertex, I was getting my pH up to 8.2, 8.3 during the day, and it wouldn't go below 8 at night. The fact that I've changed skimmer now, my pH drops at night. So I think while we're running different skimmers, I think if you were, I know you said, I know we've spoken about this a few times before, and you said, you know, you can't pull in outside air for, hey, Billy, what's up, Billy? Billy, we're no, talking about the I, vertex. I am. I you're am pull, pulling outside you're air. Pulling outside air, and your yeah. pH is still that low. What? Yeah, yeah, right. dude. What? Yeah, I I don't know why. All right, all right. I won't I won't go above seven point nine seven or something like that. All right, now you've confused the heck out of me now because I'm man, pulling, yeah. man, let me tell you something. That vertex pulling <clears throat> outside air. Wait, you're in a you're in an apartment building exclusive. Yeah, you're probably near an exhaust vent. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm right in the front of the building there. It's, there. There's nothing around me. I'm in a corner unit. Yeah, I. You know what? Yeah, that is, that is you confusing. Know what it is. Exclusive getting all that bad air from the highway, the LIE. There ah! you go. That's what it is. Oh, oh you man. nailed it. You nailed it. Oh man, look what I got. What, what is that? They got pods. Yeah, and I got amphi pods. This is like uh, the perfect. This is like the perfect day. I got pods. What am I eBay? <laughs> And I got amphipods holding holding the camera up. Hold on, Let's see what these bad boys look like. But um, recalibrate that probe, man. Uh, you know what? Yeah. You, you know what? I gotta. I hey Billy, I'm sorry. I didn't see your question, Billy. Let me go back. You'll see more. You going to the swap Saturday? This Saturday, Billy? Not this Saturday, man. Oh, yeah. I, oh Billy, and uh, what? Oh, sorry. One more thing, exclusive. If you're able to actually plumb in a CO2 scrubber. Uh, you, you might want to do that also. I know that you're pulling in fresh air, but sometimes, um, you know, depending on whether or not that oh uh, that location is, is close to a uh, an exhaust. That's what I just told him. Port. Yep. You you might not even know it, dude. Hold yeah. on. Can or you guys like see this? Dryer, or like a dryer vent. Wow. What do you have in there? Rolly Polis? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and Rolly Polis. Those are TMG. Those are the same ones that I got like that size. I got like five, 500 or something like that, or 1,000 from Live Aquaria. Live Aquaria pods, those pods much, right there you're showing, those things are no joke, man. They're the size of like roaches. How much How much did you pay? 
Oh, dude, I don't remember, man. I, I honestly do not remember. Yeah, around like 25, 26, something like that. Dude, I for 50, I paid like $10 on eBay. Yeah, but that's 50. All I need is 50, bro. Yeah, ten dollars for fifty, but I got like a thousand for like twenty five bucks. Oh really? Price. How much? Yeah. Was, how much was shipping? Price. How much was shipping? Free shipping. I, I don't think pay it shipping. Was, uh, free shipping. Oh okay. Yeah, I think it was uh, included on that. On yeah. That super sale or something like that. Oh, nice. No, 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 it wasn't a super sale. The only thing is, I can't see. Oh the really? Copa They're pods. doing it now. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see Ooh. the copa pods in this one. Yeah, I don't they're think. Really yeah, they're really tiny. Yeah, I, if you look, if I focus really well on the sump, I might see them jumping. You know, little things jumping. Oh like, yeah, you know, I like see little, them. I see like them. little fleas. Like mm-hmm. little fleas. Yeah, I see them. Hey, yeah. oh, um, oh, yeah. What's up, OG? You didn't say you was gonna have special guests in the building. You have uh, Professor Cruz and Captain Billy in the house. Hey, man. Oh, what, 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 what it? Hey, and first T- Billy. TMG. <laughs> Billy, you. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I, TMG. <laughs> okay. Put Billy, I'll give it up to name. Captain Billy. I'm gonna hey, Billy. that out, guys. Billy, you said the 12th, man. I just checked my text message, man. You said the 12th, man. Not, not, not this weekend. Let's, so. let's, let's see. Okay. All right. You watched my video, right? On the 12th. If I watched it on the 12th. <laughs> no, you watched. You saw my video about going on the 12th, or did you just, rem- or did you only saw my text? I saw your text. Okay. I went from your text. Well. Okay, I'm not going to brag on you. Be a supporter and watch my videos. But anyway, I said in the video what the 12th is all about. We're going, the 12th is a basement guy. Uh-huh. Now, tomorrow or Saturday is the swap. That's what. That's the one Official X is going to, right? Yeah. Is that CMS? No, it's um, it's in Williams, the one in Williamsport. Oh, no, 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 no. Gotcha, gotcha. oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the other one that we were going to. Yeah. And my, my buddy... Sent me a picture. I might send it to you later, but anyway, I've never seen some of the colors that he has ever on anything. It is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. Williamsport yeah. is a no for me this week. Yeah, I, I was yeah. never planning on doing Williamsport anyway. I think. What? I, you told me you were probably going to go. Yeah, but man, listen, man. I, man. <laughs> I, I, I could give you a bunch of excuses, but it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not the just, right just, time. What's the real excuse? No, no, no. It's not the right time. Got a bunch of okay. things happening. But there you go. That's all I want. That's all I, I want. I am going to try for the 12th, although there's some things changing in life that are probably going to alter that, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Right. I'm trying. Right. Hey, oh, oh, I wanted to try something. I never did it before. I see you guys do it. Will you share a screen on another tab? How does that work? Where you share screen? You share like if you go onto another tab and you pull something up, you can share screen. OBS. Um, you yeah. talk. Wait, you OBS. You want to share your screen, but you don't want to share your entire screen. You want to share like, like um, just oh. one thing from your screen. I want to share another video from another tab so you can all see it. All right. So what you do is you're on Windows, right? Yeah. And you're using what browser are you using? Uh. <laughs> okay, basically, take Just that open a new tab. Take that tab or yeah. open a new tab, right. open a new window, right? Okay. Open new window and then pull up the video in that window, right? I don't know if we're going to get audio, but pull up pull up the video in that window and then in the top left corner of this like this hangout right. like toolbox, right? You see a green thing that says screen share? Yes. Hit that and then Instead of choosing the one that says your entire screen, choose application window and then choose the specific window. So if you wanted to just share like Microsoft Word or just your browser, you can do that. So I want to share another tab showing you guys a video of the most beautiful tank I've ever seen on YouTube. All right. So hit that. Hit application window. Open it in a new tab. Application window came up. Yeah. And then hit once you hit the application window, then you hit below that hit share and then you'll share uh okay let's see what happens all right it says you are screen sharing all right you see it or no yeah so if you open yeah so i'm presenting you to everyone wow this is a fish tank in mexico in a hotel it has about six different eels venom coral unbelievable what? 
What size it's tank is that? It's on a gallon. Okay. This guy, this black guy. Dude, that's filled every inch. Every inch of rock has coral. That's ridiculous. Who's this black guy? What? What? (laughs) Wait, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Let me see that. Name. Yo, TMG, I think I think they're talking about you. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, it must be that black eel right there. This tank is bananas. That I'm, is I'm a, T- a I'm TMG. Yeah, that is a that is a eel to be in a um in a reef tank, man. That is yeah. That's, that's one of six eels in that tank. Wow. Little Cruz, my name is TMG. That's crazy. Um, wow, that's a nice. That's and the thing is, it looks like it still has some young colonies. Like there's still a lot of room to grow out. Mm-hmm. You know, when I saw when I see this tank, it looks like a tank that Cruz would have. Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a tank Cruz would have. Yes, probably have more <laughs> SPS. So oh, here's yeah, a definitely. question. Right? No, and uh, no green button polyps. Wait. Like so here's a question. Hey, wait, wait, now. Wait. Hold up. When, when you're placing corals and you got frags, right? How far or how much space do you give the frags to grow out? About three inches? Well, it depends on what type of corals. I mean, if they're plating, then, you know, like the Manipuras, you give them a lot more room. Um, you know, if they're SPS, you have to take a look whether or not they're shelving or, um, or whether or not they're like a uh, staghorn type. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I mean it, it 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 all has to do with the end you know the adult form whether or not it's going to be a uh, tabling uh, acropora or whether or not it's going to be a branching staghorn type acropora. Gotcha. Um, and then of course you know about the pali or pallies, the zoas and stuff like that. They tend to encrust and grow over the rocks and over the the corals as well, and they do tend to fight. Okay. Yeah, so. three inches. Three inches sound um, really close. Like I wouldn't. I don't think there's any coral right now. Like I would put three inches apart. I think. Yeah. I, except, I, except the same type, like the Moniporas. You know, like the green Monipora, the red Monipora. We know that those merge together, and they could actually uh, hybridize. You know, into the uh, what is it called? What is it called? Oh, where they call them the grafted. Streaks. Grafted. Yes, grafted monies. Yeah. <laughs> You can put money monoporas like that, green and uh, green and orange and red and sometimes purple, all on top of each other. They can grow together. Uh, some acropores do really really well next to each other. Uh, you know, I mean, you have your WDs, you have some of the other places that do really really well together as well. Um, but yeah, uh, when it comes down to millipores, they're a little bit more forgiving but once they actually hit a colony size they start going to war um, i i have a question about that crew so i've i've had it you know at one point i thought well it's not really a question it's just a comment like at one point i bought montipora at you know the lfs and to me like to me they looked like they were just green monty red monty however the red monty was a encrusting really aggressive portion part was a really encrusting and more aggressive and it ended up like completely overgrowing it it got to the point where it was growing up the stalks of like my my euphilia corals um Mm -hmm. to be honest that's one of the reasons i did like an uh, re-aquascape last year where i basically had to get this bad boy out of my tank and chip it out because it was Mm -hmm. just it was it it got it was invasive it was a very invasive Montipora, um, yeah, the red cap, typically. And, yeah, and, and 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 it does shoot stalks out. It does shoot stabilizing legs and uh, and pylons, as we call them. They, oh, they that's shoot what it those out are. The bottom of the bowl. Yeah, they shoot yeah, it that's out what those the bottom are. Of their bowl. Yep, they stabilize themselves so that they can spread out wider. Ah, is it? Isn't that I always amazing? wondered because it makes no sense. I'm looking at the. I'm like, why is underneath the cap growing like these little legs? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, stabilizes the freaking satellite dish. 
Oh, oh yeah. I didn't know that. I'm actually, I'm actually, I never thought of that yet. That's actually. Wow. Yeah. And it also, it makes really, really cool caves for the freaking gobies and for the freaking <laughs> shrimp. Yeah. They, they do go in and out and they love it. But yeah, it does, uh, it does become very, very invasive though. Uh, yeah. Those red caps could grow almost anywhere. Uh, we utilized some of them before to actually stabilize rock structures. So we'd plant it right in between the rock structure and let it grow out. Does that make sense? Gotcha. So and bridge. Utilizing, yeah, bridge. Yeah. We're utilizing the Manipura to stabilize my rock. You know, so they're yeah. sending out these freaking legs everywhere like a tripod. You know what I'm saying? And just mm-hmm. digging in and freaking uh, supporting everything. So, uh, it's growing. so once it, once it, once you've had it do the job within, so I could exactly see how that happened. If there's, mm-hmm. there's some rock that you know you think needs some, yeah, I could see how you could do that. But then once it's done its job, how do you keep it in check? <laughs> we clip it back, then we freaking uh, put super glue on it. You clip it back, and then you put super glue. Yep, on the growing edge. Uh huh. And, and is that some? It would just. Yeah, go ahead. Is that something you have to continually do, or is that just a one-time thing? Um, it's uh, well, typically, we we want it to continue to grow, you know, vertically, instead of you know shelving out. So once it actually hits that, you know, and you have that nice base and structure and the supporting structure, then what we do is we clip it back to the legs, then we glue around the edges. That slows it down and thickens up the bowl. And it basically so starts that growing thickens, up on the yeah. on the glow. And then, exactly. And once that thickens, then you can actually kill the Manipura with a little bit of elk. All right. Or you could, or you could drop salt on it. We've done both. <laughs> I, I I prefer the salt, um, especially you know we run it all the way down to about one point zero two five, one point zero two four. Then we drop salt right on top of the freaking uh, money party and kills it. That's interesting. So, what else about reef tanks? I mean, uh, sumps. Do you do you guys have a preference as as to having you know all your skimmer and pumps and everything in the first chamber or in the middle chamber, and having your refugium in the back or in the front? Personally, I prefer just because I'm doing the trite method and that's what trite recommended. But I do like, I like the Chado in the first chamber only because I don't like running filter socks. And I think the Chado kind of traps a lot of the detritus that comes from the overflow. But I think either one works, to be honest. But do you feel, do you feel that detritus stays on the bottom of that first chamber in the sump underneath your chato. Um, wait, I, I missed the question. Say that again. I said, do you feel do you feel like um, the debris stays on the first chamber underneath your chato? See, Does it I get trapped there. I don't. I, you know what? I do, to be honest, I, I don't worry about vacuuming out my. Re- I. <laughs> I um, uh, I'll have I'll have um, better light next next time. <laughs> I hear um, it. Yeah. Um, I you know what exclusive? I got a black sump, black acrylic sump, only because I don't. When I had when you had a light color sump or when I had a clear sump, I would notice uh-huh. the detritus more. But I kind of have these. Maybe once a quarter, I go in and vacuum out the detritus, but it doesn't bother me. I know you've said you're like, you know, I think Billy's like that a little bit too, where Billy tries to keep his OCD. system like immaculate. Yes, I personally don't. I'm not. I'm not that OCD with a system. So I go in. I do these quarterly like water t- water changes where I string a few water changes together, a few big ones together. I go in and I. I um I vacuum out detritus in the sump, but to be honest, the way the sump is set up, I, you know, a lot of it gets trapped in the in the um in the a lot of it gets trapped in the um in the in the what's called in the chato, and I do have the option of putting a filter like some filter floss into one section of the sump and kind of clearing it. So even if 
you know, even if you don't want to run filter socks because you don't want the hassle of um you don't want to run the hassle of uh, of 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 cleaning them every couple of days. You can um, you know, just put them on every few, you know, every week, every two weeks, and just like stir stuff up and keep it. A Dave Griffindo does the vac use batteries. What vac? Man, listen, man. <laughs> what? I think they're talking about that smoke detector that keeps going off chirping. It's, that's not mine. That's not mine. Hey, no, no, no. Hey, Dave, why did you hide Irie? <laughs> I don't know. I think. Um, hey, I wish Phil would come on because he does um, something else with his sump also. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Phil, I know Phil was. Um, I know we we're talking about refugiums tonight, but Phil was said he uses an algae turf scrubber. Um, just uh, he uses an algae chart. You guys are having fun in the chat. Have fun, roll with it. <laughs> um, but um, I know he uses an algae turf trubber, which um, that's something I've never used. So I don't know if Phil um wants to pop in for a minute and just tell us a little bit about his algae turf scrubber, or he's not being beckoned. He's being asked. Tell us a little bit about his algae turf scrubber and if he likes it. I know it's seven o'clock in the on the West Coast, Phil. Jeez. Yeah. It's ten oh it's ten o'clock here. I know. I know, but I, I like I like the option of not using filter socks exclusive. I kinda hate um <laughs> Oh thanks, Phil. Oh, Phil. Like, yeah, it's this is an audio only podcast, you know that. Um, you know, um, he said he's naked, but I don't think we needed, we needed, uh, we, did, we needed TMI. that kind of, yeah, TMI. <laughs> oh man, he threw me off. He threw you me know, off. The, the only thing with uh, no filter socks that I've noticed is my tank looks, um, a lot dirtier, meaning a lot of particles just in the water column, which I hate. The, you know... I didn't see that. I didn't notice that too much when I did it, but it could also be exclusive because I have a big refute chato yeah. bed yeah. that kind of keeps it. I got to tell you, man, whenever I'm going in, that's why I kind of reach in every week and just grab a little bit of chato, you know, a little bit of chato like every week versus doing those where you have to chop half of it. Because when you need to chop half of it, man, you could create a snowstorm. Like the corals love it because you get great polyp extension. Because imagine all that particulate food for them is like that half broken down particulate food they're having at it. But um, yeah, it can get a little snowy in there if you, it, it gets trapped in the chato. But the pods love it. The pods absolutely love it. But um, with the with the refugium and the refugium light and dosing the triton solutions, my nutrients aren't out of control. I think the last time we checked, it was phosphates were about point oh something, and my f nitrates were five. So, um, and I'm someone that feeds heavy, and you know, like my kids feed sometimes. I feed flakes in the day. My auto feeder comes on and feeds flakes most days, and then I add frozen or maybe pellets or something at night. So I feed two times a day. Um, but I think it's fine. Nutrients are fine. Corals are growing. I love it. I feed I feed three cubes of frozen food every day. Yeah. And on top of that, I feed pellets with flakes on top of that. And you still have a lot. Yeah, I that's have a lot. Zero. yeah, I know. I'm trying to get phosphates up and I can't get them up. So but keep in mind the frozen food I made myself. So I'm not going to see a spike in phosphates in that. Um, you know what I mean? And all the food that, that I'm putting in there is being consumed by the by the fish right away. So th there's nothing going over the socks, and there's nothing going to the bottom of the sands. So so my opinion is, and I know Cruz isn't here. I wish Cruz was here where we could have this discussion. But sometimes when <laughs> when, when, pe when we say, like, <laughs> low nutrients it doesn't so it sounds to me like you're feeding enough even though you don't have phosphates exclusive you don't have a low nutrient <laughs> freaking tank. baba 
Yeah, I see that. I see that. I, I saw that, Bubba. Even though you're, even though you have no phosphates, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a low nutrient tank, man. It, it's just that you don't have phosphates and you don't have high nitrates. There's enough particulate food for the corals, you know, to like eat and for other organisms in your tank to eat. So, you know, no nitrates and no phosphate doesn't mean, you know, um, it doesn't mean like there's nothing. It sounds like you are feeding a lot. So as long as the tank is happy, man, don't necessarily try to dump as much in just to get that phosphate reading, you know? Yeah, I it's, mean, you know, honestly, I was feeding twice, but now I got the Malinaris grass, and that freaking idiot only comes out at night. So I have to feed an additional cube at night in order to get them to eat. Because if not, then that guy's going to starve and die. Wait, your Melanaris comes out at night? Yeah, dude. It yeah, pisses retarded. me off, man. Yeah, he only comes out at night. So the whole day from, from like 8 o'clock, not even. Like I wake up at 7.30 in the morning. He's already in the sands. From 7.30 in the morning or before that, all the way up till about like 9 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. the guy's always in the sands. And then he comes out. Mm, you know what? It sounds like he's a hunter. Oh, whatever he is, it's pissing me yeah. off. Not because most times inverts... Well, my inverts, I don't see my inverts. I don't, I don't even see a hermit crab during the daytime. And that's because my rashes are out during the day. So well, you they're know, on, like, opposite you know, schedules. You know what he keeps doing? He keeps hovering around the um, my uh, conch snail. Oh, yeah. No, nah, he'll do that. Mine's. So he better mine's, not freaking. Mine does that. He better not, like, eat him or anything because I'll be really pissed. If DM's Reef is asking, DM's Reef Tank, does anyone take the Chato out or just leave it in the sump? I just prune it once in a while. Yeah. Um, I don't do these. Um, I prune a little bit at a time, like a handful every week or two. I don't do these like I don't do these events often unless I'm doing like a cleaning where I go in and I rip half the Chato out and throw it away. No, like every week or every two weeks I go in and I take out a little bit at a time. So yeah, so I don't. Yeah, that, that's me, just a, me. Once a month, I I cut my chato back in half, and primarily the only reason why I do that is, um, just to upset the um, whatever microfauna yeah. which doesn't even exist since I zapped the tank. That's why I'm dosing back microfauna. But I used to do it for whatever microfaunas are trapped in a chato. I used to give my, my Chato a good shake, and you would see all the detritus and crap go to the return pump and back into the display. And then I would like harvest half of it maybe once a month or one, once every month and a half. But technically, you really don't need to. Um, it's, it'll, like, if it grows to the point where it's like getting out the water, it'll die and get reabsorbed back into the water. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to break your baffles um it's not something you have to do i didn't see any benefits in doing it and i didn't see any adverse effects in um in not doing it you know so hey, that's just my take tmg yeah what's up man quick unrelated question do you have a brother named anthony um get the hell out of here no i don't <laughs> but um there i work with somebody and they always call him my brother his name is anthony Okay, there's a guy in the Bronx, a younger guy. He looks a lot like you. He plays handball. His name is Anthony. Oh, okay, okay. If he's a if he's a bouncer, then I know him. I think he's unemployed. But anyway, oh, back okay. to <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. It would have been funny if TMG would have said yes because that hesitation there was like, oh yeah, was no, like, no, 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 dude. Wolf. I get I get it every week and I work. They're just like, oh, you guys are brothers, and we're just like, no, his name is Anthony too. So. I was just like, yo, that's crazy. What are the chances you know my coworker, you know? I have a quick question. I got to get out of here. But um, mm -hmm. um, do you guys feed your corals at night when uh, at, when you shut off the lights? I do. Hmm. I, don't I, know, I noticed that a lot of the, uh, the corals I see, like the polyps, just come out at night. And I'm just like, huh, maybe I should feed them now. Yeah, you should feed them then because that's when they're in their um in the phase where they actually eat food. But gotcha. ain't nobody wait ain't nobody waiting until no one o'clock in the morning to feed no corals. I was so gonna say I, I, 
I'm in bed that night. That exactly, late. exactly. So I, I, I would. I feed them now. I feed my fish, so that's when I feed the corals. I feed them when I feed my fish. Yeah, but what I do, because like that's I said, I, seem to wake up. I shake my chato up, man. I what all that detritus that settles to the bottom of my sump, dude. I get that to the main display. I shake my chato up. Like I'll come home, and I'll just put my hand in the sump, like probably twice a week, once a week. Shake everything up, and keeps the cl- t- keeps the cloud um keeps the tank cloudy for like a couple hours, you know, just in time for twilight. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm you know that's that's just me. Like I like not that it will it benefit anything. Who knows? But that's kind of like my way of doing it. Uh, and whatever comes back down the drain, the skimmer sucks out, you know. Um, so that's just that's just me, but. No, because my, my, my polyps don't come out till like way in the night, like one, two o'clock in the morning, because I run such long light cycles. So, mine, mine comes out when the lights go off, but I don't feed corals. Hey, exclusive, thanks for uh, I don't feel corals though, but I make my own fish food, and mm-hmm. you know, every now and again, I'll put some reef chili and some, you know, last, last Christmas, I got some, um, some reef roys every now and again. You yeah. know, like like now, if I go by the tank, like the candy cane, um, probably about eleven p.m. The yeah. candy cane, you know, you'll see the feeding tentacles out. But as a general rule, it's I've never really fed corals. It's just not something I've ever done. Yeah. So, so I don't feed them. But when I am feeding frozen food, it does tend. I I blend my own frozen food, so it does tend to make it into like a nice soup, which. Mm-hmm. You know, then I think everyone gets their little pick or fill. How do your fishes eat that? If it's like soupy, if it's well, powdery. I put it in there um, frozen. Like I'll cut big chunks for them to pick at, and then I'll cut really tiny little chunks for. But then I'm running the gyres at a hundred percent, goes to a hundred percent. So what happens is once it gets hitched Melted. in the gyre, like oh yeah, the gyre just like disintegrates it. Gotcha. Yeah, I I like it. Um, in fact, um, I think you guys heard my um, my bell ring when I was on, and my new Triton solutions just arrived. Um, yeah, I, no, no, I know people. Are, we're, listen, um, my Triton <laughs> solutions leaked, and I contacted Triton themselves um, on Facebook, and they shipped me replacement vials. Like so, that's Bad what. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, um, but yeah. So um, back on the whole topic of refugiums, um, Seymour, I know you hate the whole um, complexity thing when it comes to lack of CPUs and memory and wires and stuff. Um, so I think I made up my mind. Um, I'm gonna keep the sump I have, but I am gonna make a secondary refugium. That's just 20 gallons um it's going to be outside the stand within its own stand um and it's going to sit above a 20 gallon ato container 20 gallon um aquion tank for my ato and uh, which is gonna plumb well drain back into my 20 gallon sump and it's going to get fed from my manifold since i don't use my manifold for every anything might as well might as well use it for this um and yeah and turn my current chato section into like a frag area so you're gonna basically add like a display refugium basically but it's yeah but it's not gonna be displayed at all uh all yeah. right so you're gonna yeah so bigger refugiums are always good man um, yeah bigger refugiums are always and good that's, and that's one thing i wanted to really tell exclusive but you know people are People are going to do what they want to do. Um, I strongly advise anybody who is setting up a tank, get your tank running on a refugium first. Sh- don't worry about a protein skimmer. Shut that shit off. Um, or just keep it at its lowest setting so it's not actually skimming. Um, that way you can, one, give your, give your macroalgae, your chato, a chance to actually thrive. You get what I'm saying? Because... You're skimming out a lot of the stuff. All those solid particulates get caught in the chato, and they can get broken down 
you know what I mean, on a surface level, um, as they convert into like ammonia, they'll they'll break oh my gosh, my nephew's home. Um hold on. Wait, is that your is that I just noticed it now because they're but is that your fire thing that's beeping to you? Oh my gosh, yes. Dude, Take the batteries dude, out, dude. That's that's been beeping for months now, TMG. To be honest, <laughs> it's like months. It's been months. That thing's yeah. been beeping for months. It's you not got, just tonight. I got my poor female poodle just sitting in a corner, shaking to death every time she hears that. <laughs> that thing, that thing's been beeping for. I know, I know. Sometimes you jump on the stream when yeah. you at work or stuff like that. But man, yeah, you, that thing's been beeping for like months. Dave mm -hmm. says over a year. Oh, I heard it. Dave says no, it's yeah. over. A year. Yeah, it is. It is over a year. Are you kidding me, man? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. Oh, uh, Dave, working. Dave, Steve, and Nate Hurl said that thing's been beat longer <laughs> than months. So everybody knows. Tent, mm -hmm. I can't believe you got that thing running beeping that long, man. Yeah. No, the thing is, they work. They're hardwired to the house. You just need to put a battery in them. Yeah. You know, mine, mine too. Yeah. If it's hardwired, so if you take the battery out, it actually still beep. Yeah, they okay, still but, beep. Yeah, but it's not it's not actually like doing anything. It just no. oh, it just it's just telling you that it needs a battery. Yeah, that's exactly. that's for to annoy you, but man, like yeah. yeah, one year. All right, somebody super chat Seymour. Seymour, when you come get some SPS, drop those batteries off. Bro, it's like a 99 cent store battery, Shut man. Up. Like I'm trying to get you some super chats. I'm trying to get you some super chats, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't actually need it. <laughs> All right, uh, I promise, I promise I will go and get some batteries. Beep. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, back you to what I was saying. What? <laughs> what was I saying, Seymour? Um, um, you were saying um, you recommend anyone who is starting up a tank get the refugium running. Yeah, exactly. Um, and just, yeah, just give, just give the actual Chato a fighting chance. I, you know, like when it comes to like exclusive, he, what's up? Not much. Um, he's you know running a skimmer. Like he has one, um, one Chato compartment and a Chato reactor, and it's just like it's three. You have three things competing for nutrients right now, you know, um, as well as the corals. So I always like you know before you even get corals in a tank, just throw some Chato in it, let it let it, or whatever macroalgae you decide to go with, just let it do its thing. Let it like thrive, yeah. like let it, you know, let it like build itself up, um, before before you actually like start skimming and putting on mechanical filtration. You know? I think I think the last time, not not tonight, but I think Cruz is always talking about when he's setting up like his commercial systems, he gets the refugium up and running first. Exactly, like I, he like gets I, it up and running before. Yeah, you know. he gets this future fugium, puts Chato in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he, I don't remember if he says he ghost feeds or what, but yeah. he gets his refugium up and running before he then connects it yeah. to the main and, system. And yeah, like this is this is not like by any means picking on exclusive. I'm just using him as an example because he just kind of like he is pretty much like the newest one to salt water <laughs> in this. That's pretty much like active in a in a sense besides Tina, and you know like he basically like has everything like i would i if i was like you know um what besides me no no the newest tank the newest tank besides you so yeah, um and if i was like supposed to like somebody local walking them through how to set their tank up oh, dump okay. the fil yeah, yeah. dump the filter socks you know what i mean like he said he was running filter socks you know get rid of those get rid of turn your skimmer off Turn on the lowest setting if you're worried about pH or whatever, and just let your macroalgae do its thing. You know, and um, my, my macroalgae or my chato, whatever you want to call it, fell mm -hmm. apart and all died within probably the first week I had it. So I'm sorry, yeah, but you're, you're running. You're running. Are you still running filter socks? No, I wasn't running fil. I've only used a filter sock a couple of different times just yeah. to like get try this out. I do not like them. I'm yeah. already telling you right now, I won't use them. But, um, 
And I do have a skimmer though, so yeah. And is it it's skimming pretty good? I'm assuming. Um, I dump it once, probably once a week right now. Sounds like it's, yeah, it sounds like it's, it's skimming good. You know, um, but yeah, that's that's just what do you what do you think about that, Seymour? I, I no, I I like the idea of when you have a new tank, get the refugium up and running. I do. I think I don't think I've set up a tank in a while without at, at least having a Chater reactor or some kind of refugium on it. I haven't because to me it's just I've kind of proven you know to me I know that they work. So I don't think I've set up a tank in a while without a refugium. So I absolutely believe in them. Hey Ash. Um, yes. Question for you. Like, I know you've set up like a new system recently. Um, you have it up and running already with corals in it, fish in it. What are you? Do you have a refugium in it, or do you plan to add one? Yes, I do. I use the Chato reactor method. Ah, uh, perfect. And uh, yeah, of course, I am a firm believer of, as well that uh, you know your algae needs to grow somewhere. That algae in your display needs to grow somewhere, and I guess uh, Kato Reactor gives that option, or a refugium, or uh, uh, the algae scrubber, algae trough scrubber, right? And as well as the pods, it helps to do with the pods as well. So yeah, I wouldn't set up any tank without uh, the refugium or growing Kato of any kind anywhere. I think um, you give it the right environment for like this weird nuisance algae to grow and it won't grow in the display that's the whole point yeah yep yep so are you guys saying that you can't have a um you broke up there tina but no we're not saying that skimmer I've... and a refugium no 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 i'm running a skimmer and a refugium and i think are you running a skimmer ash i am uh my skimmer is at the back chamber of the all-in-one tank uh, it has okay. a special chamber for the skimmer Okay. So um so so um so let me ask you a question, um Tina. So when you yeah. did the refugium, it was when it was almost it was very close to when you set up the tank, right? No, it was just about a month. It was no, not even a couple of weeks ago. Um what the tank light... had already been up. The tank had been up for about a month. What and light then I... what lights huh? are you what lights are you running on your refugium? Um I ended up I had the it was a huge light. I just can't remember the name of it. I've already pulled it off and tossed it. I'm not sure if it was the Innovative Marine huge light, but it was a strip, a strip that you put on the side of it, and it was super bright and about burnt your eyeballs out. Oh, it was um, it was, um, called, it, it it was, was a huge, a huge uh, light, like a magnifuge. No, I think it was Innovative Marine. If 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 I remember right. All right, so hang on a second. And where did you get that Chato from? Algae Barn. Uh, and it fell apart within the first few days. I mean, just literally broke into little dinky pieces and was blowing all over the place. So I ripped that crap right the hell out of there. All right. So I listen, I like Algae Barn for their pods. And I'm not saying Algae Barn is a bad company because I've bought from them and I love it. But every time I meet up with Dave and I go to like his elephant. So. <laughs> I don't want you to be, you had a bad experience with it, Tina, but that doesn't mean like they're all created equal. For instance, I'm not saying my Chato is great, is better than anybody's, but let's mm -hmm. say my Chato, if I give you some Chato, it's already been acclimated to, you know, to 12 hours to used to be in, you know, under lights for 12 hours a day and under grow light, like purple or mm -hmm. red and blue light. 12 hours a day and under high powered lights. So, you know, like, but if someone is growing Chato under, let's say those $5 Home Depot lights, and then I put it in my tank, it's probably gonna die pretty easy because it's not used to intense light. I would have to acclimate it slowly. So I'm okay. just saying that bad experience you've had from Algae Barn, don't let it necessarily like just you know, discourage oh, you oh. from, from doing a refugium period. Just No, I don't. I've got the middle section cleaned out. I'm not discouraged about using it. I'm just waiting for my tank to, I guess, mature because I was told by a few people now that the reason why it broke down the way it did is that my tank wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Could be. New, I don't, new I don't, print lies, I guess. I don't if, know. 
It could be. It could also be you just got bad Chato because every time I meet up with Dave, I know Dave is in the chat. Every time I meet up with Dave at like the store, um, you know, like the, the, the um, um, I'm going to look up this light while you're helping me. Oh, while you're yacking, so Nate said that her Chato started to make it once she dosed iron. <laughs> That was a good point, Mage, to bring up. You know, I, you know what? I never really caught on to that, Mage. That's a very good point, Mage. Thank you. I never really, until I bought this, I have this really expensive, like, Chato reactor that I got called a Pax Bellum. And when you buy a Pax Bellum, it comes with iron, malabinum, and some other substances. And it wasn't until I mentioned that on a stream's crew says, yeah, that's like the stuff. Cruz was saying to me, you know that stuff? that Triton describes as <laughs> the stuff they put in it to encourage algae to grow. That's what that stuff is. It's iron and molybdenum and some other, you know, stuff. So, um, yeah, I, at one point when I was doing, um, before I was doing Triton, yeah, I was dosing like a few drops of iron. There are a few elements that Chato specifically needs that you have to kind of dose. And if you don't have that stuff, it's going to be hard for your Chato to grow. Or a lot of times this happens to people who use um, Chato reactors is the first two or three months, your Chato growth is insane with Chato reactors. And then what happens is all of a sudden you notice it not growing as fast anymore till it starts to die. That's when I think you should look into iron, you know, um, dosing maybe a few drop, get some iron and dosing a few, not, not regular iron, like get supplements for aquarium iron and just dosing a few drops. Where is uh, where is Chato from in the natural environment? Is it out there in the ocean like how the coral are? You know what? I have no idea. It's a very good question. Um, I think it probably grows to a certain aspect right around the mangrove roots. That's that's what... Oh, really? Yeah, we were talking about this not too long ago, and you, you brought a very good question. And that's what the gentleman told me, that mostly around... Anywhere around where it can have some, uh, you know, uh, not too strong of a flow. Definitely it cannot grow uh, right besides the corals. Otherwise it will take it over. Death Mage, it says people had me buying all types okay. of lights. Oh, I found it's the Innovative Marine Chato Max 2-in-1 Refugium LED light. Okay, let me go and look that up. Hey Ash. Yes. I got it on um on Amazon. All right. Hey Ash, a couple of questions about your tank. The, the the you still have the big tank or you took it down? I took it down. And what about your fish room? What no your 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 filter room? What do you call that again? Uh yeah, the fish room. The, the, the sump area and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I cleaned it up, but I left the stand in there because that's my work area. That's where I do most of my work when I have to do water tests or, you know, store anything because I still kept my water chain station down there because the plan is after a couple of years, I'm going to switch into a 200-gallon tank. So I'm not getting rid of that uh, workstation. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping the water chain barrels and everything still there, still mixing the water for my new tank. So you still have the big sump down there, or, or that's this? No, no, no. I got rid of the sump. Sorry, yeah, okay. I got rid of the sump and all the plumbing. I just uh, kept the stand and the uh, the water mixing station that I built. Gotcha. Right, and lots of other stuff. But um, but Ash is already talking about later on, like a few years from now upgrading so <laughs> you know get... yeah. <laughs> I, never, I didn't understand the whole thing to be honest ash hey. yeah no what happened is uh, og i you know i've been watching that tank for six years and it kind of grew on me i mean everything was flourished everything grew up and i was kind of running out of space to put more corals right so i'm like okay either i take it down and just start fresh or just take it down, take a little bit of break. Um, you know, I want to do some renovation in this room as well. I want to lay some hardwood flooring in as well. So now with the tank being there, I was not able to do any reno here, right? So What I'm size ready. was that tank? It was a 150-gallon standard uh, marine land from, uh, you know, six foot long. 
from marine land with uh, dual corner overflows. Mm -hmm. The tank was good, but I guess it was six years back kind of impulse purchase, uh, I would say. Uh, now, after being in the hobby, I know how important the depth of a tank is for the visual look as well. Uh, that tank only had 18 inches front to back, which is very standard. And of that 18 inches on each corner at the back end, nine inches were taken out by, you know, the corner overflows. Right. So literally I was getting nine inches, uh, you know, not the whole uh, tank, but still uh, the view from the side was only nine inches and it was not appealing me. I was like, no, this is, I need to grow. Okay, now it's time for a 200 gallon tank. Oh, uh, yeah, I already saw it. It's already, <laughs> yeah, my one of my buddy builds tanks here, so he said it whenever you are ready, let me know. I know the exact design I'm going to build for you. So that's that's the plan once I finish all the reno and everything. A couple of projects, and that's that's pretty much it. But I want to stay in the hobby, and that's why I jumped on this all in one system. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a few questions in the chat. Um, oh, by the way, just to say, hey, Ash, you're in the Toronto area, right? Yes, sir. All right, so if I'm in the Toronto area, man, we got to meet up. If I'm in the Toronto area this year, we got to meet up and you got to show me um, some of your LFS and some stuff, all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of LFSs around here. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, you know, you, um, hit me up when you're here and we'll, we'll definitely take you around, bro. All right. I have a couple of questions. Um, Reefkeeper saying, oh, I'm really liking those cups you sent me. I have biofill in the bottom, and once in a while I put some filter floss in the other. Um, just to kind of expand on what um, Reefkeeper was saying, um, we both have Red Sea tanks, and Red Sea has these really proprietary filter sock holders that they made these weird filter sock sizes, and I had some points with Marine Depot, and long story short, basically I sent Phil some cups, so he was just saying he likes the cups. So mm. instead of changing your filter socks every day, you just put these cups in, and then you could put floss or whatever other media in it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, um, but I like them. Um, there's people. There's a guy overseas in Australia, Australia, yeah, in yeah. the UK um, that makes some really cool stuff. Um, I think he stopped making it for some reason. I don't know why. Reef Dreams. He stopped making the baffles and stuff. But there's another guy in the UK that Paul knows, a queer, Reef Community Worldwide. He knows a guy that um, he hooked me up. He connected me with the guy. I never ended up purchasing it because I knew I was go, going to go without filter mm -hmm. socks. But okay. um, that those I like those. I actually like it because it's you can get filter floss cheap versus having to swap filter socks every couple of days. Yeah, agreed. I have I have uh, filter socks that came with this tank, but it's brand new, still sitting in the pack. I'm not using it. I'm using the filter floss. So the tank came up with, you know, with its own uh, little bracket. That it's called uh, the Innovative Marine Caddy, Caddy Light something, where you could literally uh, put the floss on top. In the middle chamber, you could put carbon... At uh, the bottom chamber, you could put GFO or any other, you know, rocks or whatever. So I'm just using filter floss, to be very honest. It's hey, easy. Uh, to, yeah. Ash, what part of Toronto? Lisa said she's in Toronto, too. Lisa is in, uh, I think, uh, just north of me. She's in uh, New Market, if I'm not mistaken. We spoke about it last time. Uh, I'm in uh, Mississauga, right beside the uh, Pearson, uh, the International Airport. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, oh, when you land, you're coming here, buddy. <laughs> uh, I know where, I know where, I, well, I've been to Toronto. My wife's uncle is in Toronto. So I've been to Toronto a couple of times. Um, okay. And my company, the company I used to work for, they had an office on Blur Street downtown. So, oh, yeah. Uh, That's yeah. where my wife works at Blur Street. Yeah. So, Blur. So, yeah, I like Toronto. Oh, oh, you're a man of the world, kid. I know Toronto. I like Toronto, man. It's nice and clean. People are friendly. Canadians are friendly. It's. I like Toronto. I really do. Hey, OG, you go to a city like Toronto, it's just as diverse as New York, mm -hmm. a little less amount of people, but clean. And it's almost like they self-police each other. You know the thing that shocked me the most, Ash, when I was yeah. in Toronto, just to divert a little bit? Hey, Josh, I'm going to answer your question in a sec, but I, I digress a little bit. 
the subway to the subway turnstile was broken. OG, mm. you know what they did? They put up a bag mm. and said, "Hey, put your token in when you're going on the subway." And it's not like somebody was there checking it. Like people were walking by, and I checked. I stood there when I was waiting on the next train, and you know nobody walked in. Everyone just put the somebody just folded up a bag and just say put tokens here. And you know, everybody put their tokens in the bag. No one who sort of said, Oh, let me just walk on the subway free ride today. A whole go. different society. Yeah. 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 No, there is oh yeah. I mean, uh that's something that I have noticed as well. Uh myself coming from India. Uh it's been 15 plus years now, but Yes, uh, what you noticed is the exact same thing that when I was new here, and I'm like, wow, I mean, this is just different. Yeah, my, uh, my mother was born in Canada, but for the life of me, I can't remember if it was Toronto, Montreal, or Quebec that she was born. Well, that's good. So you got some Canadian blood in you. Yeah. Maybe that's why he's so nice. He's not the typical New Yorker, you know? <laughs> You should add, add A at the end of the sentence then. A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let me, um, let me answer Josh's question. And I think it's kind of a loaded one. I am new to refugiums. What are our thoughts on Miracle Mud, Calerpa, and Micro Bubble Scrubbling versus Chato, Live Rock, and Crushed Coral? So, uh, Wow. Again, I think that's kind of a loaded question. And um, to be honest, you can you you can pick any one of those things that you've mentioned. I think you've mentioned six things, and I don't think it's a versus the other. I think they all work together to filter your tank. It just depends on what you want to use and your situation. So, Miracle Mud. Um, I personally like Miracle Mud. I'm not running it now, but I like Miracle Mud because I think it's a good refugium substrate. Now, I know there's a lot of people that say, hey, it's great for trace elements. I'm not saying it's not, but it's kind of hard for something to measure. I have friends, a lot of friends I know that use Miracle Mud and are happy with it. But for me, when I'm looking for like a refugium substrate, Miracle Mud is hands down the best refugium substrate I've ever used. So I will use it for that. Like, I don't know if it's the particle size or what, but it just encourages pods to breed. So that's why I like Miracle Mud. Calerpa, I've never had Calerpa go sexual on me, but I've just heard enough stories with certain strands of Calerpa. So I, that's something I don't. I've never used. I've I've used it. Dave provided me some Calerpa, and I used it, but it ended up sort of killing my Chato. When I put it side by side with Chato in the same refugium, it sort of killed my Chato. Um, the next thing you mentioned is micro bubble scrubbing. I bubble scrub. I think bubble scrub was a part of why I was able to beat dino flagellates, um, whatever strain of dino flagellates I have. But I do micro bubble scrubbing for a few times a week for a couple hours per night. So I'm a fan of it. Chato, I prefer Chato versus Calerpa. Live Rock, um, I mean, I think we all need Live Rock. I think you're talking about refugiums, but I don't put Live Rock in my refugiums only because I have like, um, I don't know why. I think in the past I have. I don't have a good reason why I don't. I think right now is just personal preference. But if you were looking for a space for like pods to breed or pods to kind of congregate and some substrate for them to crawl on, um, then yeah, I would put some pieces of live rock. Crushed coral in a refugium. I don't know if I would do crushed. I, I'm experimenting again with crushed coral, a deep sand bed, a really fine sand bed, a coarse sand bed. And again, I think Miracle Mud, that's the one thing I absolutely love Miracle Mud for is the fact of um, that it's a good refugium substrate. And I tend to just replace a little bit of it, not not you know like a third or I don't have a percentage, but I, I replace a little bit of it every year too. But I, you know, I love Miracle Mud for that. I don't like crushed coral. Um, and I don't like um, sand in a refugium unless it's like a remote refugium where you can take it offline. But I, it's something I've experimented with, and I don't like it personally. That was a mouthful. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a mouthful, but I, I hope I got through it. And I hope that made sense, Josh. Um, any 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 anything to add to that, Ash or OG or Tim? Tim's been quiet, Tim. Well, I've been quiet because I'm not <laughs> I'm the wrong guy to talk about refusium. I'm not a refusium guy. Uh, I don't I don't want one. I I'll 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 do my export some other way. I know the only reason I would really want a refusion was, you know, would be like to add some copa pods or stuff like that, you know. But otherwise, I'm I'm not a refusion guy, so that's fair I, enough. Uh, I like the sump. I, you know, I need it for reactors, the protein skimmer, and all that. But I'm just not. I just never have been a refugium guy. So that's fair. That's fair. Um, what do you do to re reduce nutrients? Or do you use carbon dose or just water changes? Yeah, well, I'll get what I was using before. Before I had the big accident with the tank, and what I've done in the past is I'm using, uh, well, yeah, water changes for one. But then I use, uh, as far as phosphates, I, I use uh, Phosgard or GFO, and then I use uh, for the nitrates. I, I use a, a, a bio pellet reactor, so that's worked for me. Yeah. So, but this time, you know, I've got the new tank going on, and by the way, I just did a an update on the <laughs> on my channel on the tech, but um, let's, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm going to I'm going to do the uh, the new. I want to get some of the Max Spec uh, media. I, I want to try that. I'm anxious to try that this time around too. So right. that's I'm, what I'm going to be doing. I have to admit, Tim, I haven't. You said you just did an update on your tanks on YouTube. Yeah. So let me hang on. It's I am. Just got up. It just. It's just. I just got up. Uh, I'll be doing another one pretty soon. I thought by this time I would have the my radions uh, up and and maybe have the corals uh, moved over, but it didn't happen. I, I've been waiting on a, a used radion to match the one I had because I only had one for the cube, and so I needed one more. And I just got that in. So this weekend I'll be getting the lighting all set up over the new tank, and then I'll pull put the corals all over. I'll pull the corals over from the 4D I've been using to temporarily house them. And it will be up and running. And oh, sorry, guys. Hey, Tim, is it you that has a lot of freshwater stuff on YouTube? Is that you? No, that's not me. I'm not a oh. freshwater guy. All right. So, <laughs> not the, not the, the, that's, if you like freshwater, that's that's fine. But I'm not. I'm not a freshwater guy. Do me a favor, Tim. I'm not sure I'm subscribed to you on YouTube. So, can you just drop a comment in the chat yeah. so I can find? Yeah. So I could. I could. Um. Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's just Tim's Tim's tank. Yeah, I just searched for another Tim's tank, and I found like a freshwater guy. So I just I um. I don't know if I'm subscribed, so I just want to. Yeah, I'll put one in there. Yeah. What's up, Tristan? What's up, DC? Oh, DC in the house. Let me put a. Um... Oh man, let me get a let me get a link, DC. DC in the house. Um, I think while just let me know when you've put a comment in the chat and I'll go ahead and um, get it. But um, I think um, Josh had a follow up question. Josh said just had a follow up comment. Josh said, I think he said his LFS, his LFS recommended him put crushed coral for the pH buffering. I think while just let me know when you put a comment in the chat. All right. Hey, Tim. All right. Um, I, you know what? <laughs> You guys, let me know. I, I, I am. I don't know how. See, that's something I've heard since I've been in the hobby, and I don't know how. J j over the last year, I've learned how calcium reactors worked a little bit, and I think you have to get that thing down to a pH of like six point five for that thing to break down and to buffer. Now, I don't know how much. If you're depending on your substrate. To sort of buffer your tank, I think your tank is already going to be in trouble at that low pH where you're waiting for it to buffer. So I think when you're considering a substrate, I'm not saying crushed coral. I don't think crushed coral is the right for you. Um, but, you know, I don't think 
you know, like that should be a consideration. If you want to use Crush Coral for other reasons, go ahead and use it. But I don't think buffering capability is is one of those things. Um, what do you think? Hey, Tristan, you popped in. What's up, man? What do you think about that? You and Ash, what do you guys think about that? Well, you know, here's here's a here's a funny thing that that one needs to take into consideration, right? Any substrate, if it's uh, aragonite based, uh, especially some of the ones like, for example, Tropic Eden. Now, traditionally, my tank runs at um, right around seven point six, seven point five pH, and um, this was the effect that I used to have no matter what I did. Uh, unless I tried to run my skimmer line outside to raise it, or unless I opened up some windows or, or nobody was home, that's pretty much where it would even out. Now, when I changed my substrate over to the Tropic Eden, uh, I went ahead and I got about a three inch uh, bed, give or take. And uh, one of the benefits that the Tropic Eden said that it would do is also buffer my pH. Now, I don't know if it's me changing sand, but most definitely my ph shot up to right around 7.8 and that's where it's been now for the past three or four weeks you know probably longer than that since uh since i switched over my sand and um you know i don't while i don't all the way attribute it to just the tropic eden uh, i'm using other things like uh you know uh calc Wasser to help buffer my my uh my ph but definitely i believe substrate has a, has a a place in buffering pH, I don't think it's going to be um, astronomical uh, at all. But you know, I think I think some some um, substrates will. I've seen the difference when I had in my big tank. Um, I had uh, you know an inch inch and a half sand bed, and my pH was always hovering around eight point you know one eight point two. Never had issue, and then. Um, you know, I was kind of getting a bit agitated with the sand bed, getting dirty. So I started removing the sand uh, very gradually in the system. And what I did notice was uh, the pH started dropping. Uh, you know, not a big drop, but definitely gave me a hint that the Ragonite sand does buffer your pH. Um, I guess that's where the theory of deep sand bed comes into play, uh, either in the sump, uh, right? But... Uh, I wouldn't, as uh, Phil mentioned in the chat, uh, definitely try to stay away from uh, crushed coral. Uh, that's the nitrate factory. I've seen so many tanks that has gone through that. So, yeah. All right, you guys. All right. All right. So, you so I would say, okay, so, okay, nitrate factory. Let's talk about what you just said about being a nitrate factory. Yeah. I think anything can be a nitrate factory. Okay, any coral, any sand bed can be a nitrate factory. I think it really depends on if you want to use crushed coral, what's your maintenance like? Are you going to siphon your sand bed? Are you going to mix it up from time to time? Are you going to do water changes? If you are and you just absolutely love crushed coral, if you did those things, you would eliminate a nitrate factory, right? Uh, because you're you're doing maintenance, are willing people are people willing to do that? More than often not. I don't know too many people who mix up their sand bed or do a real deep clean of their sand bed. But the reason that they say crushed coral is a nitrate factory is because they feel a lot of particles get trapped under it a lot easier. A lot of particles get you know sucked in. You know when crushed coral builds up in a corner, you'll tend to see a lot of fish poop not kind of bounce across the surface of it as you would with, you know, a smoother sand bed or a finer sand, you know, hopefully to get picked up by either a cleaner crew or by your flow. But for me, Tropic Eden are large pellets. Tropic Eden is damn near, uh, well, for Grand Select that I'm using, it, it's damn near gravel, okay? And I actually siphon my sand bed on a regular basis, and that's how I keep my nitrates down. The other thing I'm going to say about crushed coral is versus like a, a really tinier sand bed is, um, but I, I learned this back when I was experimenting with deep sand beds is those large particle sizes. This is this is the reason why I kind of believe in like, if I don't believe in anything for Miracle Mud, I believe in it as a refugium substrate because there's something with the particle size that absolutely allow pods to breed. 
And I think once you get into like the crushed coral type sizes, like it's not a real good, you know, environment. Like you'll see pods here and there. Like I'm not saying you're not going to see pods, but I don't think it's a good breeding in my experience for pods. I don't think maybe maybe they don't breed properly their eggs. Maybe they can't move the substrate to, you know, shift it every now and again. But, um, you know, pods are an important part of our cleanup crew. And maybe because they don't breed or proliferate in a crushed coral, that's one of the reasons why, you know, that detritus builds up, um, you know, it gets down in the cracks and then there's no, you know, there's no worms also. You know, a thing is when we have these smaller sand, you know, if you get worms, bristle worms and stuff, they can actually move the particle size. I think when you get to those big crushed coral particle size, I think it's harder. That's my theory anyway. I, I think so. But it's something definitely the pods angle. I believe it because it's something I've experimented with. So speaking, um, speaking on the, um, the the nitrate factory, like in the freshwater, they say canister filters are nitrate factories. How does that work with the, the good bacteria eating nitrates and nitrites and ammonia? You know, um, I'm going I'm to take that for, you know what, to be honest, in salt water, they use the same term. They say nitrate factory too. And personally, I, you know what, I really don't like that term only because I think, not in the way Ash just used it, but I think sometimes I've seen people use nitrate factory to dismiss like certain things that, you know, um, maybe they can't explain or it's an easy out for things. So I've heard people say, well, Canister filters can be a nitrate factory. Well, yeah, if you don't clean them and you don't maintain them, yeah, it's a nitrate factory. The same thing with, um, I don't use filter socks because the maintenance required for them, I'm not going to upkeep. I don't want to change filter socks every two days, but I've heard people dismiss them and say, oh, they're nitrate factories. Well, they're going to be nitrate factories if you don't swap them out at least once a week if you don't clean them, if you don't have new ones to swap them with, if you just leave them in until they overflow and the food breaks down, yeah, it's a nitrate factory. But um, that's, you know, that's my take on that. I, I think sometimes we use the term to kind of dismiss certain things too easy. That's but a quick, nitrate factory. Quick question. The, the good bacteria is what eats what? Ammonia, nitrates, nitrites? The, um, so I think my non-scientific explanation of it is, um, you know, fish and broken out food waste and coral waste and everything produces ammonia. And then you have a bacteria that lives on the surface of um, rock, on the surface of sand, that converts that into nitrite. And then you have another bacteria that um, kind of converts that from nitrite to nitrate. And nitrate is the less harmful of the tree, of the three. Right. And then, um, you know, that's what you remove by water changes. That's why you remove with carbon dosing. That's what the refugiums that we've been talking about tonight, that's what removes that from the aquarium. But I think it's a little bit different in freshwater. In saltwater, it lives on the surface of a rock and anything. You don't need to actually sort of do anything. You don't need to pump it through like bio balls or anything to actually convert it. It just It's just a naturally occur bacteria that, you know, um, it it's just lives on the surface of the rock. I don't, to be honest, I don't think there's much you can do to prevent it. You just start up a saltwater tank and eventually, you know, you add a fish. It might be tough for that fish the first couple of weeks, but eventually, or you can ghost feed, but um, it lives in the tank. It lives on the surface of rock. Um, I think, I think it's the same biological process. It's not the same, but I think in so freshwater, you guys do night, you guys have ammonia nitrate and then nitrite, right? Nitrite yeah. and then nitrate. Yeah, yeah, but I think ours on our tanks is a little bit different because it just lives on the surface of the rock, sand, and whatever other surface, you know, you have in the tank. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, it's Tristan, you, you live in the woods? I see you got deer in the backyard. <laughs> Man, I got I got a couple of Bambies that like to hang out, you know, come have a beer every every so often. <laughs> yeah, but you hunt, don't you, Tristan? Yes, I do. Little do they know. Oh man, are you a lord? Are you allowed down there to just like hunt whatever's in your backyard? Hey, I got five acres, and my buddy next door is five acres. So, you know, once you got about ten acres down here, you can go shooting on your own property. Ooh. Who's saying don't hit a Bambi? You know. Ooh. 
I'm just saying, I'm going to just bust them down in the woods, string them up, and uh, roast them. I'll let you guys know when the deer roast is. Hey, hey, hey. hey. I, uh, I put the YouTube Young Kristen. in the chat. Uh, <laughs> you can look, uh, if you look, uh, I, I never thought about doing a search, but I did a search on it myself. There's all kind of Tims in there. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is T-I-M apostrophe S, then tank. And if you look, you'll, you'll see my avatar down there. Yeah, I, I already subscribed. So I'm your 57th yeah. subscriber. Right, cool. And I will okay. check out. I already opened like a quick playlist of your tank, so I will definitely, okay. um, I'll definitely, you know, once um once I end the stream in like another fifteen or so minutes, um, I'll definitely check out your tank. Fifteen right. minutes? No, no, no. We're here till two o'clock. All right, man. All right, all right. Y'all can stay till two o'clock. Y'all can stay till two o'clock. <laughs> stay till two o'clock. No, that's all. Y'all can stay till two o'clock. Man. I well, can't. It's only, it's only nine in El Paso, so it's okay with me. But I don't plan on sticking around to that. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm. A, I'm. Go I've been trying to work on getting some guests, you know, to come in to the tech talk, and I think yeah. the time is really tough. The time is really. Ha -ha. It's. It, I, so I think I'm, I'm not making any promises yet, but I think I'm gonna move this to eight. I think I'm gonna move this to eight. Move it back an hour earlier. Yeah, um, I think that would be better. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to start at 9 is because my kids go to bed at about 8.45, 8.50. So I kind of wanted to, you know, like start the stream once my kids go to bed, not have, you know, kids trying to talk to me or whatever. But I think 8 o'clock. I think I'm going to have to do 8 o'clock because um, – I've been trying to try to get some people on to show off their Apex, show off their aquarium tech. And I think the time just kind of throws them off. And I, I've been getting a couple of cancellations because, you know, you schedule a few weeks in advance and people say, yeah, but then once the time comes at like nine o'clock, it's really tough. So well, then um, it depends on where they live as well. I think it's East Coast. Yeah. I think eight o'clock is I think I'm going to move to 8 o'clock. No promises if it's going to be next week, but sometime over the next two to three weeks, I'm going to move to 8 o'clock. I think it's a better time for everybody. Right. Maybe, maybe for next me. week you can shoot for 8.30, you know, just, you know. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I will definitely try. I know um, it'll be better for Reef Keeper because we're going to get Reef Keeper on next week. Yeah. Oh, he's your guest? No, no, no! I'm just, I'm just putting him on the spot right now because he was oh, forced to come back. Gonna throw Phil in under the bus, are you? Yeah, yeah, I throw. yeah. <laughs> Hey, Craig, how you doing, man? Not too bad. I, I figure I wait. I don't. Uh, I have a sump. I don't know if I do a refuge in the way a lot of people do. I just use a lot of Marine Pure, um, just for the uh, biological filtration and Chato. Um, and I'm probably going to switch over to the Max Spec Pure Biospheres. I think that's what Tim was alluding to. Yeah. And I'm going to do that because of the uh, less channeling effect with it and the fact it doesn't get clogged up with detritus so quick. Yeah. And that's the only thing I, I want to switch over to that for. Well, what um, is that called? Max Spec Biosphere? Yep, Max Spec Biospheres. All right. I've never actually. It's very close to what the biohome is that you see uh, Michael Aaron's and uh, um, a few of the other guys over in the UK using. And. Mm -hmm. no. Balls. Yeah, the Brits call it balls. Balls. Oh. Yeah, they call them balls. Yeah. Oh. Balls. Balls. So this ah, so this is the this is a the same thing as let's say um, marine pure, but instead of uh, the porous style media, it's uh, so each one of those balls from Maxpec is equivalent to about five hundred and forty square feet. Of space um, on the ball and marine pure is like 240 square feet so you're getting more and it's less likely to have detritus get trapped into it clog it and hence yeah. make it not effective that's and what makes it cheaper. interesting to me and it's cheaper it it's, is yeah it's not expensive yeah. it's not expensive where, where, where can i get this like when i ooh, oh you get uh, do a search oh it's a uh, max spec by uh biospheres yeah, Bio wow. Yeah, just do a Google, Google on it. I, somebody's carrying it. I think maybe... Uh, Saltwater Aquarium. Saltwater Aquarium. Wow, you get 2.2 .2 pounds of this stuff for $25. Yeah. That is yeah, way yeah. cheaper than the yeah. Marine Pure. Pure. Yep. yep. And less likely to, to become a detritus trap. So it's, right. it, it's one of those things. I 
got that trick from uh, who did I get ripped that off from? It, BRS did it after the fact. I forget who. Oh, uh, Majestic uh, Aquariums, the UK, uh, the Australian guy. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys are familiar with him. He buys it in bulk, these little squares. And what he does is he would put these in his tanks. And when he would send people home with a new tank, he'd give them this in a bag of, of water. And they put this in and help them seed their tank, right? So along with whatever bacterial culture or whatever, right? So, yeah, I just got sold on it. I don't know why I understood it very quick, but I did. And that's kind of what I left with. And that's what led, me, led to me doing those minimal rockscapes that I do. Um, and still being able to support the fish and not have huge ammonia spikes. All right, you know what? I have, to be honest, I think I might try this only because I have those, um, I have the the Marine Pure Balls, and they've been in there for two years. Yep. And if you're listening exclusive, I've, I've I think in, I promise exclusive these to kind of see this new tank, mm -hmm. and he never came and picked them up. And I was planning some kind of spring cleaning where I would sort of take them out and either replace them or try to clean them because they've been in there for two years. You figure. Oh, they're, they're going to be probably, yeah. yeah. So I might just. Not only know. that, if you take one out just for fun, right, um, just give it a squeeze. Like take one ball, put it in a bowl on its own, and just give it a little squeeze and watch how fast it starts to disintegrate. You know what? Well, I, I know that from experience how fast they dis disintegrate. So yeah. um, even even the marine pure block that I have, it you know you have to be very careful when placing it. It, it disintegrates pretty easy. But you know what? I'll, I'll figure out, since I have a bunch of if I do decide to go this way with these biospheres for max spec, I'm gonna fi try to figure out a way to kind of do maybe an experiment and see how much water each holds. Or maybe yeah. after two years, maybe I'll saw or take a knife and cut it in two, like a mm -hmm. cross section, and try to see how does it really get clogged up after two years. Um, I don't know if it'll. I don't know if I'll learn anything, but it should be interesting. Yeah, it would be. Um, I know for a fact that Marine Pure, when uh, BRS did their little thing with it, it holds a butt ton of water. Yeah, like that's like a virtual, but there's no, no other way to put it. There's a ton of water in them, but you could also see uh, it was Nick Aquarium Cabinet Solutions that we were talking about it, and kind of noticed the fact that you know he's not wrong that the dead bacteria would eventually start clogging the pores. If you're uh, going to have so much die off, there's a right? Difference, there's a difference in the way they're made, and I can't remember exactly. Nick could tell you, but I don't. Yeah, Nick, know. Nick's Talked really in on that one. Yeah. It where it doesn't trap it, try which is what interested me. So, thanks. Craig, do you have these already, or are you planning on buying them? I am planning on it, yeah. I'm, uh, like I was saying in chat, unfortunately, my computer had other plans. <laughs> so it blew the power supply on my main rig. I just get the thing back, just get things rolled in the way I want them to roll, and the power supply blew out right in the middle of something on me. So um, I've got to replace that with, a, with another one. But once I do that, the kind of next step is to... Uh, and I got to move. Uh, and there's those that are aware of what's going on with that. So it's backing me up. But eventually, I'm getting these. I want those. Um, I can get the right amount for both my tanks for like half or less than half of what I would spend on Marine Pure replacements. So, and they're called Mac, they're called Max Spec Biospheres, or yeah, spheres? yeah, yeah. Max Spec yeah. Biospheres, yeah, and that uh, Biospheres are. Yeah. Yep, saw what a cream got him, and uh, I, I I just like skimmed the video just now, and it, it seems that they're actually made using a bunch of smaller spheres to create yeah. right, a larger right, sphere. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which would mean no channeling, uh, no like channeling. like a like a marine pure, which uses uh, a chemical that dissolves the channels that are in there. Right. Ah, I see," said the blind man. This I is, like the this way they're made. Good. And they don't break down. That's yeah, nice. the big sales point. Oh, There's Tristan, I just saw the video. Jeez, that's really interesting, right? You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I knew that if I joined this damn stream, I was going to buy something. And now I'm like, I have like four boxes in my car. Well, <laughs> the thing that Nick sold me on with these is that uh, there were two things. Who who had it out of the bag, Tim? Do you remember? Oh, who had Michael what? Aaron. Michael Aaron had them in the bag. He has some. Yeah. When yeah, he held Michael, the bag up, there was yeah. no dust. 
Yeah. So unlike yeah, the yeah, box yeah. that you get for you, the Marine Corps, there was no dust. In the bag. They come in a bag yeah. instead and of just them. in the box. No, no, okay. you take them out of the bag, of course, right? Okay. And, but the box, right, yeah. Yeah, they you know how with the Marine Shore, you have to rinse it before you put it yeah. in the tank. It's so loaded mm -hmm. with dust. This, you don't have to. There's just next to no dust. I still would, right? But, I mean, it's not going to be anywhere near as, as labor-intensive. Um, yeah. And I'm going to be going Miracle Mud as well because I just there's too much good stuff about Miracle Mud to not use it. Um, uh, I don't know if you were aware. Uh, oh, I was having an issue with my 120 with a big brown diatom algae blow up in my tank and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from and I literally just solved it between bubbling and adding bacteria. That's it. I didn't do anything else. I didn't change anything else. There you go. And, you know, that's worked out really well. Yeah, Reefer really. Girl, that's Reefer Girl, uh, Reefer Girl had, did a really good video on, on uh, uh, Miracle Mud. So did yep. uh, Dave. So did Dave. Oh, yeah. Pretty convincing, pretty convincing videos, you know. They Very much so. Right, like you're trying to help you explain to people, like I don't know what it is that's in Miracle Mud. Um, what was it, Miracle Mud? We were talking about angel farts bubbling. So you know, <laughs> you know, it, it really just goes to show how much you can do with very cheap little. Well, Miracle Mud's not cheap. We all know that. That's that's no. what I was saying. That's not cheap stuff. But we spend so much money, and I think, oh, you would agree. Like hardware wise, a lot of people will blow a lot of money on hardware. When something is so simple as, as just, you know, taking a container, putting it inside your sump with this Miracle Mud in it, whether it be 5 or 10 or however much you can afford to put in, um, makes such a great big difference on the filtration and nutrient levels in your tank. Just don't do it like Steve Rodder did. Well, let's not. <laughs> let's not. His rant tonight was epic about demonetization. Oh, I thought yeah. that was pretty oh, no, good. I so. got to listen to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for him. I, I understand where he's coming from, but that change all happened before I really got started in this. I have no illusions to making a, a, a button. I'm not going to become the next big YouTuber, but you know, I, I like getting on here. I like talking this. I have learned more in the two months of streaming with like, Oh, and Michael and all that than I did in the whole last three years. Yeah. You know, I agree. Oh man, you guys making fun of Steve Rodder. That was I'm not, I'm not making fun of him. Uh, that was it. That was that was funny. No, I, I listen, Steve is very entertaining. I, but, but that, that, that there, miracle so. that miracle mud video. And oh, then, that was so epic when he did that. And I'm sitting there going, Well, I could have told you why that happened. Well, uh, and then <laughs> But that's something that I would have done. I'm going, Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, in fact, to be honest, the first time I added Miracle Mud, I did end up creating like an entire haze. Like, <laughs> haze. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a Steve Rodder haze, but it was a haze. <laughs> but then um, it was after like Dave and some other people, you know, showed me that, hey, pre-soaking it yeah. made yeah. a big difference um, when the adding thing, it. Yeah, and I'm going to put mine in a container. With the lid, drill holes in the lid. So I'm going to pre-soak it in salt water, and then I'm going to slowly lower it, and then slowly remove said lid after it's settled. Right, and it's like I didn't even need to be taught that. <laughs> I'm just like I'm going to do it that way, so I don't wind up, you know, you know, this nice big puff. Right. I'm also starting to wonder if that's what led to the huge nutrient spike in his tank and his big algae outbreak. It's, you hey, know, there's got to be a correlation there somehow. Hey, you see, Reefer Gill put Miracle Mud. Guess what color? Guess what color that he had, he had an acrylic uh, thing <laughs> container made for his miracle mud. Guess what color the acrylic container is? It's orange, like everything else. Oh, know? he made it orange, did he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. there you go. He's, yeah. so, he's so OCD, man. It's like it's hey, man. Yeah. It's the two most I've never met Reefer Gill in person. He's on the other side of the country, but the yeah. two people who I've met, who I've seen. Who are OCD about everything is Billy Pipes and Reefer Gill. And Reefer Gill. <laughs> I'm telling you, like Billy Pipes is, I've seen Billy's tank in person, and Billy just pays attention to detail to everything. Like yeah. everything is clean and well organized. Like that's just, that's his mantra. Yeah. He has the cleanest both, sum. They're both really like cool guys. I mean, I'd, oh, I'd, yeah, they're cool. I enjoy meeting both of them. They, they uh, really sound cool. Oh, Billy is hilarious. When you meet Billy, it's hilarious. <laughs> Non-stop laughs. Billy is a good guy. I like Billy. Yeah. yeah. I definitely like Billy. I like um yeah, I've met Billy Pipes a bunch of times. Um um, but um he's a good guy, man. He's a good guy. I well, met Billy, him in, I met in him Ohio in my, too, isn't he? 
Billy is what? No, he's, he's no, 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 no. He's in New Jersey. He's in New Jersey. That's New right. Jersey. New Jersey. That's why. Yeah. I always, that's why I always met him a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. I've met him a couple of times. I met him at Reefa Palooza in New York last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. he was the guy with the wagon, like pulling, you know, those kids. You know, yeah. when you're, yeah, he was the guy with the wagon. And the thing with Billy at Reefa Palooza is everything you needed. So I was at Reefa Palooza and he, I was like, oh man, I need to find something to eat. He was like, I got candy. I have snacks. He had candy. <laughs> oh, he had snacks. He, really? he had water. Um, I needed like um, frag plugs. He's like, I have frag plugs. I have water. I have prayers. cups. He had ev everything <laughs> yeah. you could need. I needed, I think we were bag. Someone bought frags and needed salt water. He's like, I have salt water. Like who has <laughs> extra salt water? Like yeah, Billy really had everything you would ever need at a frag swap. He thought about it in advance and had it there. Yeah. That's OCD to the nth degree, and that's yeah. the guy you want having around, right? Yeah, yeah. yep. Billy yeah. is a great guy. No, I, I love watching his stuff. Like, I love his method. I don't do it exactly like he does for the uh, uh, refroids. Yeah. I just sort of modified it because simple fact is I don't have the nutrient export to handle doing it like that, but I and just sort of played with it to the amount that I had, and it works great. It still does the exact same thing that he showed. So I get that heavy sort of, I get it in the coral instead of getting it everywhere. And I just throw the rest away. I don't broadcast feed that amount in my tanks. That just wouldn't be a good idea. So. What, whatever, whatever Billy is doing for these A cans, I follow his advice to the T. Like he yeah. said, two or three times a week, I've gotten, I think I have five different A cans in my tank. I got them all from Billy. And he says, you know, feed them a few times a week. And I've been following his. And believe me, they look absolutely stunning 100 yeah, percent better. absolutely stunning yeah i've never been able to keep a cans before and now not only i am i keeping a cans but they're absolutely thriving they're like big juicy um the biggest one the one i recently got from him like that thing doesn't even go in at night it looks like a frankenstein at night with the sweeper tentacles with the feet. Yeah, nice. nice that's when i uh i go in. me what? and tristan were talking about that earlier that's when i go into feed go ahead nice now I was saying, Seymour, when you're ready to keep SPS, then holler at me. What do you, you mean? Got I, got, I got I got you SPS. Got the cans, you got the eight cans down packed. When you're ready for SPS, come holler at me. Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> Wait, let me count. Let me count and give it to you live on air. All right, let me see. Tell you how much SPS frags I have right now. <laughs> Like I literally don't know uh, what I've, happened. I got twenty four SPS frags right now. Oh, I didn't get the message. So, twenty four okay. SPS frags. So you know, I'm not. Listen, man, they're small colonies. They're you're frags. Getting there, you're getting there. You're getting they're frags. There. So just to say, you know, when I'm ready to, I'm ready. So you know, just so there's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna be ready. I'm ready. So if you got some for me, you got to give it to me now. You know. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I yeah. I got, I got like. I think I got like three or four. I could probably give you. Um, T much. Tina said Billy would be proud of me. I actually got my A cans to eat new spectrum pellets tonight. Nice. They now like mysis, roids, and pellet food. All right, nice. Tina. Yeah. All right. They, they dropped down there by accident, and I watched them suck it up. So I was like, well, here you go. And I gave them some more pellets, and they snarfed them right now. You want to watch funny is watching my wife try to feed pellets to my son firecracker and sun corals <laughs> and it, it's just this what are you doing and she's like well and she's got her fingers on a pinch of food and of course the fish are all over her while she's trying to drop I these the in fish first. <laughs> and, I, and i looked at her and i said why didn't you put the pellets drop some in for the fish and then put pellets in a turkey baster and feed them and she looks at me and she goes whatever and i'm like okay <laughs> i uh, nope Done. I'm out. Whatever you're doing, you do that. And okay, and, and I feed them later. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Now, see, I didn't use a turkey baster. I actually stuck my arm all the way down there to make sure that and pinched it in. Get, yep. Yeah, could get get my <laughs> trumpet corals. It's the one. The ones that I fed tonight were the trumpet corals, the acans, my plate coral, and then I fed my anemone, and that was beast to sit there and watch, oh, and my Duncans, to sit there and watch them all just snarf that food right up and then turn into this great big, <laughs> yeah. they swell all up and you're just like, look at you, you pigs. <laughs> well, that's it, eh? 
but it's nice to see that they have a great feeding response. So I got a question for Tristan, and this is me looking, you know, way into the future a little bit. So I am planning on moving. And we're already starting to think about tanks, you know, like bigger tanks, like a big tank. And I saw while I was streaming, you dropped in a video about the framing tech stand, right? How do you like, I, I, so I know, I think you have, there's some kind of sponsor relationship there. I think I saw it, but how do you love this framing tech stand? Because it's so intriguing to me that, you know, you can get a tank. And, and the, listen, I've looked at the specs on their website, and this thing isn't expensive. It's really cheap. And then, you know, it's cheap. And then what I also like about it is you can use this frame and then sort of get cabinetry built that matches the decor of your home. So the tank will look integrated into, you know, whatever decor your home is. So what do you like about it? It's the, the stuff that you got delivered recently. I haven't watched the video yet. Yeah. How do you like it? So, oh, so in, in, in a nutshell, I mean, okay, so I've always had wooden stands. And the last time that I had a, a metal stand was when I bought a metal stand from Petco for a 20-gallon log. And um, that, that promptly rusted very quickly as soon as salt water got all over it. And it was just a quarantine tank. And I've been looking at some of these steel stands, and I checked around locally around me here to get somebody to weld a steel stand for me. Now, welders are not very common to find all over the place. And welders who understand aquarium and what an aquarium stand should look like and, and what kind of weight that we're going to put on top of it is even harder to find. So when I did find one and I quoted him out, the price was pretty significant. And I realized two things about that stand. Number one, it either had to be built on site or it would very severely limit how I can move that stand into the house and where I could put it. That was my number one. My number two, it was, I would definitely have to wrap it with something else, some kind of wood, MDF, whatever I could find in order to make it look really good. And number three, even if it was powder coated, if I scratched it, if I did something that permeated that powder coating, then chances are it would start rusting at that point. And that, for me, eliminated the steel stand off the bat. I had only ever heard of aluminum stands through a co company called uh, Primo Reef. And it was a guy who used to um, basically take your measurements, draw a diagram, send it to a company who would then cut the metal for you and then ship it or drop ship it to you and for that he charged a premium obviously the designing and all that cool stuff and and the hardware was fairly you know inexpensive for him to do that and uh when i tried to reach out to him to say hey how much would it cost you to build a stand for me he's you know mia so i started looking around and contacted this company framing tech and said hey could you build this for me could you build me a 24 by 24 and they said, yeah. And 24 hours later, the guy sent me a CAD diagram with the tank sitting on top of it, 24 by 24, and told me what he would suggest I use for the uh, framing tech stand. When I got it here and I put it together in about 30 minutes or so, I sat on top of it. I pushed it around. I tried to rock it, tried to, you know, really tried to give it good to the stand and nothing happened to it. And uh, it pretty much said, all right. Let me try this out with the frag tank, and it worked out well. Now, when I was going to the bigger tank, I already said I wasn't going to use wood. I wasn't going to use steel. The only other thing was this aluminum stand. So I contacted him, and he did the same thing again. 24 hours later, I had a CAD diagram with the, with the, with the tank sitting on top of it, and it was load balanced in such a way that I knew exactly how much deflection, if any, was going to happen. And that sold me on it. So thus far, since I've been using the the um, the frag tank stand, and now that I got this one in here, man, I don't know what you would possibly use to build that. I believe this framing tech stuff, uh, this type of aluminum, is what they also use for building airplanes. You know, dealing with that pressure, that flexible, all that crazy stuff that airplanes have to go under um, and deal with. And uh, if it can hold a plane up in the sky, it can hold a tank up on the floor. You know what I mean? It's not going to move around. And uh, so far, I'm I'm really enjoying it. It's a permanent thing for me because um, I didn't want to 
face 10 years down the line. My tank has already grown out. And over the years of fragging, dropping water on my stand, all of a sudden I have wood rotting, mold, mildew, any of that stuff, you know, nails rusting or anything like that. I, I just didn't want to deal with that. And um, I always told myself, plan for the future. And in this future, I expect that my stand will outlive my tank. And then that's pretty much what my end goal is, to buy a stand and only buy it one time. All right. Wait, first of all, thank you, Meldium, for that super chat. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I was. I really do like it. In the video, I'm skimming through the video. Did he make, like, panels for you for your tank also? Because yes. I thought I – th Ah, I thought that all they made was just a steel stand, and then you skim it. You start out – you sort of – you know, build the cabinetry yourself. I didn't realize they also made the the um yeah, the, the covering. The, yeah. Uh, so, so the paneling will cover all of the metal that you see, and it's actually ABS plastic with a textured front. Um, and I, I like I like the plastic over the acrylic because it's a little bit more resilient, and the textured front makes sure that it won't scratch as easily uh, as, as acrylic would have. But you know, the paneling is something that that was an afterthought for us, so it wasn't something that I was thinking along the lines from the beginning. I always expected that I would wrap it with something that would cost me significantly less than building an entire stand because the wrapping would be completely cosmetic. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. bears no weight. Um, it, it could have any kind of doors mounted any kind of way that you feel like. And because it's going to be three sides, it can go from floor all the way up to the edge of the, of the tank. And you'd never know. You open up a door, it's a steel frame underneath it, but you would never know. Uh, um, one last question about this, man. I, I'm anxious to see like the series. I'm definitely anxious to see the rest of the series. One last question about this. When um, you spoke about a little bit about deflection, so how are you going to ensure that, you know, when you put the tank on it, are you going to just put like a leveling mat and then put the stat tank on it? Hey, hello. I just want to say good night real quick. Yeah, I'll, hey, I'll man. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end in a few minutes, but um, I'm I'm glad Tristan came. I'm glad I caught that video because this is um, and maybe Tristan, I need to contact you privately and ask some follow up questions. But yeah, sure, anytime, uh, man. Uh, but yeah, as far as deflection is concerned, the 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 stand as it is is engineered with zero deflection. That means there is no deflection in any panel on any side, downward or any other direction, unless extreme external forces apply to one particular sides or you know or anything like that so it's it's designed to not deflect now that being said i'm still not going to just drop the tank directly on top of it so i plan to put a three quarter inch piece of ply that's also um sealed and uh that three quarter inch ply will sit on top the tank will sit on a piece of um uh, of like, you know, the neoprene type material mm -hmm. uh, just to absorb any, you know, bumps or whatever in the glass itself. Um, but for the most part, the tank, the stand can be leveled from the feet and the feet can support like 10,000 pounds a piece. And it's like nine feet. So it's it, it can support a significant amount of weight. Um, and uh, as far as deflection is concerned, there won't be any. It, it it would be, it would be. I would, it would, I would have to park a couple of trucks on top of it to get it to deflect. I think uh, it would shear before yeah. it actually did anything yeah. else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and I you're talking about a lot of force. Place. Yeah. Go ahead, Tina. I just watched that. It's awesome. Yeah, man, that's really nice. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm anxious to see the progression of that, man. Looks um, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I've seen my LFS um do some stuff with with I, I don't know if it's framing tech, but like extruded aluminum. Just um I've just seen some stuff like that that uh I think it's 8020 he used. Um yeah. Yeah, it's that's actually not new. Yeah, it's, it's not actually new. not new. But um, you know, a lot of places, a lot of things that you can get online in terms of eighty twenty are like the singular tubular steel in different millimeters of thickness or whatever. Um, Framing Tech actually sells a couple of different ones, and 
the while my base of the stand is not the same as the top because the actual top is almost like two pieces of extruded aluminum melted together somehow or you know just, just like that together but it's doubled up for the top so it is it is really significantly uh heavy duty it, it's it's fairly heavy too uh, as well so i and mean easier to do than my more. stand was <laughs> <laughs> yeah your stand is man i can't believe that guy did that with my stand that was hilariously overdone but it's like oh I'll, that stand will be around long after my tank yep yeah, well, these are strong. These eighty twenties uh, extrusions are very strong. I've seen. I've, I've when I ordered my railings for hanging my radians, I went to the factory and I have seen these things can hold a lot of weight. Yep. Yeah. And um, the option is the options are so many. You could create so many uh, brackets within the stand itself. It's just uh, unbelievable. You come up with a concept and you could create it. And it's so easy, Tristan, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen all those uh, small little things that they use. It's very easy. You and can put shelves in it that fit into the slots of the yeah. actual stand itself that are adjustable up and down. So I could build a shelf inside of my inside in, on the inside of my stand 100%. without using anything else other than four four connectors. Yeah, 100 percent. I tell you what, I you know, where I work. Um, you know, right beside my shop is the automation classes. I work for a college and they have the whole shop for the students who take the automation courses where they build all sorts of robots and all kind of, kind of stuff. This metal, this 8020s are used to build the stands for those big, large, heavy robots. And, you know, literally it's so damn easy to to assemble them and then to, uh, you know, uh, disassemble them again, it's like a piece of cake. But when you see the screws, you would think, really, this will hold the weight? Well, I mean, when I went for my railings, the guy showed me a half-inch screw that's used only particular for this particular stand. And the guy said, this can hold 250 kilograms of weight, just this screw. Wow. 250 kilograms, just the screw. Yeah, just these the are screw. strong. <laughs> Yeah, they're thick, man. They are they're stupid thick. Like yeah. they're thick and they feel solid when you look at them. Like like if you if you took a hammer and like <laughs> whacked one of the screw, you would expect it to dent or something like that. You probably see nothing at all. Yeah, you'd probably jam the thread or something like that before before it did anything to it. And they're expensive, mind you. They are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 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 hardware is the actual most expensive portion of any type of uh you know um stand like this it's the hardware is where the investment is the hardware is i want to say probably oof, i want to say almost what would half be appropriate ash uh a quarter I, I maybe think, yeah yeah i because i i'd rather leave it up to them to to give me the the joints uh -huh. Cause they know, uh, you know, which ones exactly to go with. I mean, there are various uh, measurements, right? There are two inches, then there are one inches, then there are inch and a half. You know, the width of the extrusions itself. So it it depends. And when I was looking for a stand to build for my 150, I was looking into that. And when I got the quote, I'm like, this is more than the entire cost of my reef. I better stay away from this. this but that was good. And the good thing is you could slide acrylic into that slots that you have. Uh -huh. So it really looks, when it all comes together with the white acrylic and everything, the stand looks much better than the Red Sea stand. Yeah, it oh. looks clean, very clean. Very Wait. clean, it looks like. Yeah, it's been around for a while, actually. Yeah, it has been actually around for a while. It's just that, you know who's starting to commercialize building with it um nuvo the new innovative marine nuvo tanks and stands that's yeah. what that is oh okay. yeah. ah. nuvo took it a step further by using kind of like a, a wrap around the extrusion yeah to give it the look of wood mm. but it's just a wrap like a molding yeah, like a molding, like a wrap. Yeah. 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 I think it's, okay. it's actually, I think it's vinyl, to be quite honest with you. I think it's just, um, you know, a little bit thicker than normal vinyl that is wrapped around the, the aluminum extrusion. Yeah. If you get a chance to walk into LFS that has a, a new, one of the new 
uh, Nouveau, like 50 gallons or something. I think that's the biggest size that they make right now, 50 gallon all in one. Yeah. If you look at the stand that it's on, I think it says APC or something like that on it. Oh, uh, okay. if, you, if you open the door and you look down in the bottom, you see the T-slot. You see the extrusion. Yeah. I think I think Marine Depot has a few videos on their channel about the stands. It doesn't go in depth on what it is, but I think at least you could get some close up video. You can look at some close up video on on um but you know what that's a good call, um Tristan. That, yeah, I think that's exactly what that is. You know, um, I, as I said, I used I used to make it as a rail for hanging my three radions on that 150. And the way how I did it is my radions, I could slide them. If you check out uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank's very, very, very old video on his 425 or 450 gallon tank, that's what I use. Uh, you know, you just measure the gap or, or the width of the radions screws. You could literally slide the radions right to left wherever you want to. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing about channeled aluminum, right? Yeah. So yeah, it it's I can see the benefit in it too, and I'm sitting there going, oh man, maybe I should take a piece of that and attach it to my canopy design. And I'm like, yeah, I'm lazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've seen, Craig, I've seen. I want, Craig, you won't be surprised how easy it is to assemble. Oh, I know. It. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, it, for my front one to attach, but the thing is, I use the Chinese uh, black boxes for lack of a better term. Yeah, and there's no easy way. To attach them other than what i'm already doing anyway so it's mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense but if i were to go with radions or even primes it would be so much easier to attach them that way and a lot easier to manipulate where you want to put them exactly it, you know it's literally just a choke you know loosen it move it tighten it you're done yeah you know yeah yeah and it's not hard to use like a stepper bit to drill yep. into the channel so if you're really slick with your wiring you can run the wiring right through, through the middle it. of the channel itself yeah. just eliminate wires completely in your lights yep to just and one end coming out yeah i mean it's, it's a permanent right? thing they oh, they yeah. use them they use them in like um like like big warehouses manufacturing companies to to build the frames for those giant machines that uh like do all kinds of crazy um rapid prototyping and like uh like canning and stuff like that those mm. those things are made out of that yeah no these are strong these are strong i've lifted these these are like so damn heavy if you hit it by accident or you drop it on your foot god bless you <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you're going you're going to be in a little bit of pain but but even even with its its heft uh, you know, it's still, I think, I think built my stand will be lighter than if I did it with wood. Mm. Yeah. And much easier to assemble and disassemble. That's the whole part, right? Uh -huh. uh, it's the work is so less as compared to nailing and screwing and making sure it's all leveled and all that kind of stuff. These are all in a 90 degree angle cuts, right? So you do not have to worry about the uh, wood or, you know, when the wood has a little bevel, when you go to buy that two by four, you do not have to worry about these. These are standard straight 90 degree cut. Yeah, and if you find yourself in a position where, you want to build a stand now, but you anticipate later on that you're going to get a bigger tank or something like that. You can reuse your aluminum and your bigger stand. You just need to give them the measurements to have them recut whatever you need to accommodate your new tank. So that'll save you a ton in material. I can't say very many wooden stands that you can reconfigure after the fact to uh, do it. But for me, for a permanent type deal for me, yeah, it it was definitely worth it, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, it is worth it for sure. All right, yeah. boys. On that note, I'll check out. Yes, I I Gosh. honestly I honestly do think I'm gonna end it here because it is eleven thirty seven Eastern, and um, and uh, I am falling asleep, guys. <laughs> but, um, no problem. But thank you, Tristan. Thank you, Tristan. I'm definitely going to um, I'm definitely going to reach out to you. Um, I'm just looking for preliminary info because um, I'm just you know, of course, this is an addiction. So whatever move we make, a tank is going to be a big part of that purchase. You know, so you got to start thinking about it. Plus, my wife is really keen on getting like a two hundred or three hundred. I'm not going to let that go to waste. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> 
I'm going to take advantage out of that. If I have to prepay for something and say, nope, you can't take it back, I'm going to do it. Well, so. Good thing is 15% off if you guys mentioned Tristan's Reef over at Framing Tech. There All you right. go. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tina, thanks for jumping in the Hangout. Um, thank you, Tims. You've been quiet for a while. Thank you, Craig, with that avatar that scares the heck out of me. Yeah, free for badness, man. <laughs> All I'm right. Hey, Ash, thank you for jumping in. I know we had exclusive earlier. We had um, Billy Pipes jump in. Thank you for everyone in the chat. Um, I Reef, K Reef, Buddha's Aquarium, Daily Reefing, um, Daily Reefing and Jeff. Uh, Daily Reefing Jeff and K Reef had like a good conversation going about kids. Um, I am so glad I am past that phase, guys. I do not envy you. I'm so glad I'm past that phase. And that's why I will not... Um, be having any more kids. I'm past the potty training, all that stuff. So I'll leave it up to you guys for that. Um, daily reefing. Um, the other Jeff, another Jeff. We have so many Jeffs. Woody, um, Bubba was here earlier. Reef Keeper, Meldium. Thank you again for the super chat. X Method, WVU Reefer, Miss Risa was in. Um, reefing with O was in. Oh, that's me. Josh Weaver, thanks for the question. And Ash, Lisa, all the people that were in earlier. Thank you guys again, and good night, and I'll see you guys next week. Good night. Good. 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 good night, everyone. Good night. Have a great good night. night. Good night.